Well, welcome, welcome, welcome to our unpopular opinion. Today, Stradivari, Mr. B, is going to bring to you a highlight, impactful show, and a show that brings to you whether these ladies could be a little bit funny or just give you their opinion on their takes on their own opinion. So today, ladies and gentlemen, I'm definitely going to start with, well, I'm only gentlemen on here. I'm definitely going to start with our Coming to America. How many of you have actually seen the show? I've seen it. Yeah, me too. Oh, great, great. So we have all in one accord have seen the actual show. Okay, we've seen the movie. Okay, well, um, I'll go ahead and start with, with me. My take on it, you know, my personal opinion, I'm sorry to say this, but it wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. It was... <laughs> It wasn't funny to me, but it was more of a trying to tell the tale of what the story once was. So my my take on that on that particular part, I really didn't like the flow of it, how they was going with it. None of the kids was funny. Um, they wasn't funny looking, funny acting, funny talking. Um, it just they didn't have an it factor. I can't even remember their characters. Um, it was kind of a hazy movie. In its own right, the only things I kind of do remember is the McDowell's and all of the other members was in there and other family members was in there. But I really can't have a particular point where I quoted a part of that movie that would make me really want to watch this movie. So, I mean, if I would, I would let my kids watch the movie because it was much more um, non-sexual oriented. So it, it wasn't as bad for little kids to be able to watch this movie. So if the parents were sitting there with, with their kids, you pretty much could watch the movie at the same time. And it wasn't that, it wasn't even a lot of bad language to me in, in the movie. So I, I was just missing so many aspects of the movie. So let me go ahead and start with Marcella. What do you think about this movie coming to America? Well, I didn't expect to laugh, but it was so silly. I did find myself laughing. Okay. Um, I don't. I mean, nobody expects Eddie Murphy to make a literary piece of art, anyway. I mean, he's a comedian. I will say um, that it probably it, it it talked about stereotypes. You know what it means to be black, what it means to be African. I kind of i I also feel that it was um it was trashy, basically, because I mean, when you think about how the um, African culture is, the, the country and everything, and to depict them like that. I mean, it's almost like it's a joke when you watch other shows that depict other monarchies. Let's just say that because his mama, he was a little prince. His mama, dad was a king and queen. They kind of do it with respect. So I, even though I laughed, it was a guilty pleasure. Even though I watched the movie, it was free on one of the... Um, online streaming networks. So even though I watched the movie, um, you know, I wouldn't watch it again. Oh, for <laughs> I would. Okay. Okay. I would. What about you, Miss Mr. Molly? What about you? I, I would have to agree with with uh with Marcella on one on one point. I I won't watch it again, but I did enjoy it. I mean, it was a it was cheesy. It was a feel good movie. I did like, you know, that it kind of showed. I mean, in a very very stereotypical way, the difference the differences between the two cultures, and then you know the struggle with him finding out where he came from and him struggling to fit in. You know, I can imagine us going through the same thing. You know traveling to Ghana or Nigeria and then just trying to fit in, you know, so I, I, I've been there, so I get it, you know, oh. so <laughs> it's, a, it's a different experience coming from Houston, Texas and trying to fit in with people who've known who they are since their birth, you know, mm -hmm. it's a different right. feeling. So I, could, I, I, I felt the movie. I enjoyed it. I think that um, I love how they brought forth the feminine energy and and you know, not dismissing the princess and allowing her to become queen in her rightful place. You know, I do like that that whole theme around you know, getting past old traditions and welcoming in new things and moving forward with new tra traditions. I did appreciate that part of it very much because um, you know, in, in in African cultures, women are suppressed a lot. So I did really appreciate them giving the message that it's okay to let women lead and 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 be you know 
who they feel they were born to be. So, I mean, I, I enjoyed it. But, yeah, it's not something that I could watch over and over again. So. Okay, Miss Michelle, what about you? I loved it. It was a stupid comedy movie. Okay. I laughed my butt off the whole time. I expected it not to be as good as the first one. That's just how good the first one was. And it would have been very hard to make another one, a sequel, as close to that. It was stupid funny. I mean, it. we wish it was better, but I appreciate the stupid funny of it. I was cracking from beginning to the end. I love the different segments of how he brought in Gladys, uh, in Vogue. It was, you know, he, he was like, I'm just going to have fun with this movie, regardless of what people say. But like Damali said, I do appreciate the various messages. If you really listen to what they said and how they talk the script, if you really listen to the script, you would have saw the various messages to teach us, you know, reality wise. And like Damali said, I love the fact that he was a king that understood change and he allowed his daughter to become the queen of whatever it was called. So I love the uh, wife, you know, and the fact to represent, you know, 30 oh, years of marriage. Called? Lord. I, no, I forgot what it was called. I, I, what? From, the, from the first movie, you don't remember Zamunda? Zamunda, okay, yeah, Zamunda. I knew it started with. I, I didn't want to confuse. I didn't want to confuse it with the other one because I, you know, we got Wakanda so much in our mind. I didn't want to com confuse it, but you know, I like the messages. Like they show what they've been married for thirty years. You know, that was just letting people know you can stay together for a long. You know, when it comes to love, they've said they married for thirty years. The daughter became the queen because she knew how to run. The son found himself. He didn't fall for what his parents wanted him to be. He followed his dreams. You know, so it was a stupid, crazy, funny, but messageable, if that's a word, type of movie. You know, that's Okay, all. okay. Well, see, you know, that's why I, I like that we have a panel, because now we have two sides and we 50-50 on this. Now, Marcella definitely hit the most powerful point of the of the movie now we gotta let's let's just state the facts let's state the facts mm -hmm. of the movie the fact that he found his son that he didn't know he had mm -hmm. but he knew he had a son was kind of a of a a storyline that goes to show how men play different roles in this Americanized world at this point so let let's reiterate that Marcelo on, on on them not understanding the storyline <laughs> of this movie and how this king was going to be king but was chosen not to be king because the daughter took the place. But let's let's talk oh, about this element that really hasn't been touched on. The storyline of the movie and how this yeah. particular movie came to play. Well, you know, I, I did want to say I was thankful for the Mali for sharing her experiences. I never experienced that. So I was almost there with you, you know, and um, it was a, it was a really nice perspective um, to get. And I was like, wow, you know what I'm saying? This year, this, this did, this message did parallel on this, allowing her to be queen and everything. To answer your question, Mr. B, I think it's just, a, it's, it's the it's the stereotypical story of the black male in, in America, and it relates to having a baby mom, um, having um, having a baby out of wedlock, have to go back to the mother. And I must say, Leslie, her first name is Leslie, right? She was uh -huh. hilarious in that role, and right? in, the, in the movie role. Yeah, she was hilarious in that role. So I think it was a lot of parallels. I appreciate the fact that they talk about the strength of women. I, I'm just not so sure 
that they um got the essence of probably what it means to be royalty in Africa. It was almost a parody. Now, don't get me wrong. Some of, I mean, I can't even lie. Arsenio Hall playing his eye. I mean, that's why I say I laughed when I I really didn't think. I, but you I didn't never the storyline right? on, on. You never <laughs> even talked about the storyline that you brought up. You brought up how how it even happened. How he just found out he had a child in in a whole nother country, but he really didn't even know he had that child. Yeah, it, it parallels the Black American male experience sometimes when we do have children in the U.S. with not without um, joining in a traditional way as a a, a family unit. Um, it, it was just so much there. I mean, tribalism exists for a reason, and a lot of people treat it like it's a bad thing, but I'm, it, it's cohesiveness within you know the, the continent. So my point is this. Even they did this, they it was the same message kind of and coming to America and the Wakanda movie, which I, I'm wrong for Black Panther, right? <laughs> so, um, well, what, was, what was up with the Black Panther movie? What well, you, you got, mean? You got the prodigal son returning home, but he don't have the heart of a lion. It's the story that you know you must lead, rise up, lion, you know, Simba. The same story, everybody know that, um. Our culture, if you really think about it, because so many of us really don't have a connection back home, once we get that connection, once we get that knowledge itself, it, it'd be a totally different situation. So there was some of the same parallels through the move, both movies. I do feel that they could have um, made it just as good as the first one with technology. Um, I don't know who had to fund the movie. Eddie Murphy might have put some of his money up. I don't know. But to me, it did have a different feel. It felt different. They connected with the story, pushed them same stereotypes out there, kept it moving. Okay, okay. Yep. What about you? What about you, Damali? What about you? Um, I don't know. I just I think that um actually in looking at the parody of it, I mean <laughs> it's not that <laughs> <laughs> it's not far from what I experienced in Nigeria. So. <laughs> yeah. I mean, as far as like the the two families coming together, and you know, like the the, the traditional wedding, you know, the whole kindred from the the from the from the uh, groom travels to the bride's home and they have a, a traditional ceremony at the home. So it was like the whole family showing up for this ceremony. And it's just, it, it just felt so similar, but just mm -hmm. in a comedic sense. So I just can't really say that it was that, that far off. I mean, it was like, yeah, it wasn't really that far off. It was just, they just added an extra, you know, it just, mm -hmm. they just, okay. Okay. What about made you? It a little more extreme and more funny, but it wasn't really that far off from what I experienced. Honestly. What about you, Michelle? <laughs> okay. So I heard two different types of scenarios. So tell me your question again. My, my question <laughs> is, is definitely about how the storyline, how he became to be, to be understanding that he had a son. That was the whole point of, of the making the movie on how he found this King. He doesn't have a, a, an heir to the throne, but he all he had was three daughters. But then he found out he had a child in America that he so quote unquote slept with this woman while he was drunk, and now he has a child. So, what is your take on this? What is your take on how this movie was even came to fruition? I'm glad that they brought that up because that's something that happens today. And I guess the purpose and the message of it is regardless of who I am or what, what status that I hold, I have another child out there and I'm going to go find them that I wasn't aware about. Okay. Bottom line, he didn't hide behind his kingship or stay in his country when he knew that his child that he did not know, he was ready and prepared. Like you said, the prodigal son, he was ready and prepared to, to transfer over the, 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 the treasures, the power, okay. the ruling. Um, okay. regardless of who he was, even though he had to go through a few tests, as we saw. So I was, you know, I was glad to see that if that is somewhat part of the African culture to take them through certain tests and trials, then I'm glad he did that. So like I said, it was a stupid movie, but the, the various types of messages and um, cultures that he did show 
you know, we saw that. So I like the way he did that. Is I think Eddie Murphy is just he's he's ready to retire. So he just like I said, he just had fun with this movie. You know, he really Comedian didn't care. I, I, well, I, I, I understand know. that, but he's set for life for crying out loud. I mean, yeah, I mean, Beverly Hills Cop one, two, and three will forever bring residual, uh, whatever you call them. What, residual royalties. income uh, royalties. Yeah. Yeah. Residual royalties, yeah. residual yeah. income, as and always coming to America. That movie is just in history. That movie is second to none to Black Panther. So when Black Panther came, it was like, oh, okay, we could compare this to coming to America. So yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad he did what he did by going back <clears throat> and finding his son, regardless of his status and position to show, hey, I got a son. I want to see, I want to show you what you've inherited. We're going to train you. We're going to test you to see if you could, you could receive it. And if you don't, then, you know, it is what it is. I really like that. Go ahead, Damali, on that. So, one. so the question was, how do we feel about how the movie even came to be for coming to America? As far as him having a son and not knowing he had a son, and then going to find him. So, for me, um, you know, it goes back even for the movie to start the way it, it did with that plot line. He didn't have sex with that woman when he was drunk. He was raped by that woman. He was drugged and raped. We didn't really, we didn't really catch that. He was drugged and raped by that woman. Okay. <laughs> which is kind of weird. Yeah. Which is, when you really think about it, <laughs> it's that double standard. It's a cultural, it's acceptable for us to start a movie with a plot that a man was drugged and raped and now has a son in another country. Mm -hmm. If you really sit and think about it, yeah, that's, that's what happens. That's fast. And that's wild it. that Come we're that just like night. comfortable with that scenario, even being the start starting of the the start of the plot like it's, it's crazy that it's just a cultural yeah. it's, it's 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 acceptable it's crazy so yeah I, that made me think about that and then the other thing that it, it that really kind of touched me was you know the whole the the daughter preparing all all of her life to become uh -huh. queen and that one word of a son she was just cast aside with the quickness like that for me I, I i felt some type of way about that mm -hmm. um just because i see in in my in my in my husband's culture you know women are just second class to men so i i like stories where where african women are allowed to lead and and to 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 fully blossom into whom you know they were born to be so i that for me that was a a strong theme for me Okay, okay. What about you, Marcella, on, on this on this tape? Oh, my, my mic is unmuted. <laughs> Would you mind repeating the question? My my question you the one who, who asked this question or brought this <laughs> this question to fruition <laughs> on how how did this story become together? Now Damali definitely put it together in an aspect yeah. of the man was technically raped. While he was drunk, oh yeah, basically. Um, but we still bringing up the the sign of him bringing this child to Africa after he didn't even know about this child, really, technically. So what what do you what is yeah. your take on that? It, it's it's about fifteen takes, but I could go through maybe a couple of them really quickly. Um, with him bringing his son back to Africa says a lot because that spoke to something, you know, I might have used the term tribalism, but it's just basically cohesive groups of wonderful. I'm about to sound like that woman from the suburbs, right? <laughs> I got friends in Africa, um, you know, but they have, they share traditions and so many different, you know, um, similarities that, you know, they have a, a very tight cohesiveness. And it's, it's, it's quite beautiful to understand and, and, and watch and everything because I think it would bode us well to form that type of cohesiveness here, right? And so when I said it was two parallels, one was that he was willing to accept the guy. I mean, you know, he was a prince. He had full um, princehood and blood. And here we got an outsider that uh, may not have the same... Um, traditional marriages running through the bloodline, right? And so okay. here in the US, you know, we kind of marry who we want to marry. And we have a lot of different <laughs> DNA in us as a result of our history. So you have um, this close-knit, you know, group of 
people who share tradition, families, and, and, and all types of things. And, and they were accepting to him. That doesn't always happen because of the right. differences. So I, I think they hit on that for one. And then the other thing too, you have the you have to dispel the myth of the deadbeat, you know, black dad. And so he wasn't a deadbeat. You know, he went back and like the Molly said and then Michelle said, you know, he got him. He brought him there and he gave them full rights. But there still was two themes too, leadership, right? Because mm. he is a priest with Prince was having a problem with moving into the next level. And then his son had was thrown into that also and expected to take a role. So Love Wins, um, I still think that they had stereotypes. And it's interesting that Dee mentioned that it hits on a, we have forgotten that, you know, how his son was conceived, you know? So right. she hit right on a topic that we had been talking about in another episode where there's double standards. And then he was, he's, he was also able to make a movie that was, com com it was very, it was comedy. And so um, to make comedy out of what, what should be considered a serious, a serious, um, a serious topic. situation. Right. Right. It, it should okay. be. So, yeah. Yeah, okay, okay. Miss Miss Felicia, I see that you you popped in and jumped in on this one. Definitely we are talking about have you seen the movie Coming to America? I haven't. That's why I'm I'm gonna pass on this one because I, I haven't seen it. You haven't seen the movie? Okay, yeah. okay. But I but I I, I, I jumped on and y'all was going at it, so I was like, Oh, what, what made you, what made you not want to watch go what made no, you no, not no. Come it ain't that I didn't want to watch it. I just I've been so busy that I just hadn't had a, had the time. I haven't watched it. You haven't overnighted it or nothing, just play it while you sleep, none of that, huh? I can't tell you the last time I watched TV, so you gotta count me out on this one. That's a real thing. That's a real yeah, thing. I've been busy. I've been super, super busy. I could watch a whole movie on my phone while I'm driving. I, I may really? not may not watch <laughs> the movie, but at least I know it's on. At least I know it's on. Hey, I'm with you on that. When I'm working, I have Hulu playing on my third oh, screen. And every once in a while, I look to see what's happening because I'm listening to it, and I right. still go back to work. And you got to have something to yeah, just to absolutely. just to overstimulate something. If everybody else has seen it, I'm gonna try to you know get to it just maybe once or twice, or it, I'm gonna I'm gonna at least listen to it or or hear something about it. So I know you've been getting a lot of uh, bloodshot people just shooting fire on how the movie was, Miss Felicia. I know you have, and trust me, it's hard to not hear what other people have already watched. Trust me on that one. That's probably one of my most biggest points of watching a movie before everybody else watches so I won't hear them talk about the movie. That's my main thing. Like, oh, if I haven't seen the movie, oh, I'm about to shut this off. Oh, oh, oh. So, I will automatically choose choose another path, but I'm going to still stay on a little bit of the Coming to America path. It, we missed out on certain actors not being in a movie. And certain actors not being in a movie, we missed Daryl Soul Glow that wasn't in there. And um, a lot of different actors wanted to be in the movie. And so to speak, the uh, Boomerang crew is what I call them. Only Martin that was left out, but Tommy Davidson and um, I forgot what his name was, uh, David Allen Greer, he wanted to actually be in a part of the movie. Just, um, I think actually, um, Tommy Davidson was the person that was flying, flying the people back from America to, to Africa, but they took his part out. Oh, they took the entire, his entire scene, everything out of the movie. And he was the, the point of the, that part was for it to put the comedian part in it, like to make it funny. So we missed out on how to make it funny at this point. So that's the only reason why I say, ah, the movie's a little bit, ah, could have been funnier, could have been better, could have been everything. But yeah, I don't know that Tommy Davidson and David Allen Gray would do that for me, though. What? <laughs> so, okay. they're, they're not funny to me. Who, who your top, who your top they, comedian? I don't think they would have added that. Of your lifetime. <laughs> who your top comedians of your I lifetime? Mean, I mean, my my number one comedian is my man Dave Chappelle. Period. I can't go with an old schooler. Dave Chappelle is my dude. Period. Okay, so you like so that's your he number one. Number and one. You, give me a top five. <sighs> so we at least know if you if you got some funniness in you. Okay, Dave Chappelle, Chappelle, Bernie Mac, 
If Bernie Mac was alive, I have to put him number one, then Dave Chappelle number two. Oh, okay. hands down on Bernie Mac. Definitely um, hands. We're gonna go to you. Hold up, hold up. What you got? What that's only two see. right there. Give me, give me three I'm more. I'm not into com comedians like I most of them are annoying to me. Like I don't like Cat Williams, I don't <laughs> like Kevin Hart. Like they just little annoying people, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um oh uh what's the big dude with the eyes? Lavelle Crawford. Okay, He's okay. You like Big Lavelle? Okay, yeah. okay. Uh, I mean, just some of those '80s, '90s comedians. That's 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 my that's my. Okay, thing. okay. Let me go to Miss Felicia. What about you? Who's your top five comedians? Because I want to see if y'all y'all think y'all funny. I don't even know if y'all can even tell the joke at this point. It, it seemed a little <laughs> bit light. It seemed a little bit light over here. Miss Felicia, who's your top five? Uh, I, you know, so you got. Um, Kevin Hart, Tyler Perry for sure. I know he's not a legit comedian, but Tyler Perry, a comedian to you? Okay. I mean, my dear, she's my favorite. <laughs> Lord, okay. Um see, I know what with type Richard of ladies. Pryor. Are I'm not right Richard what's, what's his name? Um what's his name? Red Fox? No, the no. one that does the talk show. Um, Steve, Steve, Steve Harvey. Harvey. Steve Harvey. My mind went back. Steve, not funny to me. You know okay. Funny? Okay, you guys, this is your top five. You know that, right? <laughs> I'm stopping at three so I can be on the safe side. <laughs> so you got Kevin Hart, Steve, Tyler Perry, Tyler and Perry, and Steve Harvey. Mm -hmm. Lord, let me. Okay, okay. Uh, what about you, Michelle? <laughs> then I'm going to ask my son. I think my son, she might could tell a joke. Yeah. Almost. Oh. Let, me, <laughs> let me let me see let me see with Michelle. Michelle, what about you? Who are your top five? Don't don't try to cheat me either and, and look them up either. Michelle frozen. She frozen. Um, I, I'm sorry about that, guys. Um, yeah, my number one comedian hands down is Bernie Mac. Okay. Number number two. Uh, Richard Pryor, but I like him when he's in the movies. Okay. Mm. Number three. Um. I want to say, what's his name? Oh, where the hat? He was on the the five. What a hat! He wear. He always wear the hat. You're not Ooh. talking about Steve Harvey. Cedric the Entertainment. Oh, heck to the now. D.L. Hughley? Uh, D.L. Hughley. And he ain't funny to me. Uh, oh. I, 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 <laughs> hey, 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 this is on top. Um, oh, who else is funny to me that I can listen to all the time? Steve Harvey is funny. So I'll put him before D.L. So make Steve three, D.L. four, the last one. Eddie Murphy is only funny when he's in the movies. What? Okay. To me, to me, I want because he. I can tell y'all ain't watching none of these. None of these. I, 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 well, I no, that I don't. Well, that's the thing. Police. That's the thing. I may okay. have watched it, but if it's a lot of cussing in it, then I'd be like, okay. Well, I know you ain't watching. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. My daddy has record cards, but don't cuss. No, no, I've seen some of their standups. Don't get me wrong. But the uh, Kings of Comedy was about as close as of me listening to all the standards without as much cussing as they did, which I appreciate. But when every other word is a cuss word, now because I ain't gonna lie, if Cat Williams didn't cuss the way he cussed, hands down, Cat Williams. Okay, that okay. is a nut right there. I right, put so him. I replace him with D.L. Hughley. I'll put Cat Williams and replace him with D.L. Bumping Hughley. them down. Okay, okay, you bumping them down. All right. <laughs> You could do that though. You could do that though. Okay, okay. I see where I see you watch a little bit, Michelle. I see you. You watch a little bit. I got you. I got you. I got you. I mean, let me hear what's up. What's up, Marcella? What's up with you? And can you give me a oh. top? Well, yeah, I think Richard is the best of all times. Everybody, I mean, everybody tell her their 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 comedy after them. My next one is Dave Chappelle because um He's just a master. Nobody does comedy the way he does. Okay. He does. Everybody who is a comedian always say, you know, they watch Richard Pryor. You know, mm -hmm. um, we have Chris Rock. I think he's funny. 
Um, okay. We also had, That's my four. I wanted to Chris, shake it up. Chris Rock, right? And four, Monique. Yeah. I mean, you, Monique is funny as I don't know what. Samora uh, is way funnier than Monique. Sephora, I'm, I'm not going to take anything away from Sephora either. <laughs> no. Who's the girl on, who's the, girl on the top? What's her name? The one on the top. That's uh, uh Cheryl name? Underwood. Yeah. yeah that she's funny too. Oh, yeah. She's funny. Cheryl, Cheryl Underwood yeah. is hilarious. Cheryl yeah. can have you pack it up. Okay, okay. Who's so y'all got, lady? so now that's we bring it out some comments, you. okay? Who? Leslie, I keep forgetting the, the tall one that played in Ghostbusters, whose hair is always oh, yeah. sticking up. Oh, you talking about Egon? No, she's a no, tall. No, Leslie, one. the mom, the oh, mom in Miss America, um, the one that played the, did the Grammys or something like that. I forgot which uh, one she did. I know the mother and coming to America. Right? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So now, now we getting a little sense of. I think no, it's, uh, Jones. Can, Leslie Jones. Because because yeah. my top my top five definitely you gotta you gotta go with Richard Pryor because which way is up? I still watch which way is up, and it's like any Tyler Perry, it, he got it from which way is up. Like there's no way in the world <laughs> he got he got all of his stuff, and it's one person that nobody ever mentions, but it's straight. He he might not be my funniest, but he's the best writer. <laughs> it's Robert Townsend. No, Meteor Man and all that. I know, but y have y'all seen that the first the first movie he ever made was like um, it was like good something. I forgot what it was called, but it had all of the people that we watching right now. They had everybody mm -hmm. in it. It was, it was like one. Movie. It was like one, I forgot yeah. that. Movie. I used to that love his stuff movie. back in the nineties. Yeah. Made him to me as a as an actor, writer, producer, comedy man, comedy man. He was mm -hmm. kind of, you know, one of my funny guys when I was little. Like, okay, this this guy's kind of funny, you know. Meteor Man's kind of funny, you know. It's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. But the next one is my Red Fox is number my number three because Red <laughs> Fox, you know, he he kind of, you know, he could curse you out and and you not even know you just got cursed out. So that's kind of what I like in a in an actor. <laughs> yeah. My number four is definitely my Martin. I got I gotta say Martin Lawrence right now. Oh, Ma I forgot about Martin. Martin. That's my but, number five. But his Martin series was probably that was a masterful mind of like I couldn't get over the uh when he did the Nino Brown with the with the <laughs> fake dog and he was rubbing a dog and everything and he was barking with the joint. I was like that was kind of the over the top. One for me, Martin. And then when he got beat up by Tommy Hearns, that definitely <laughs> took it over the top. Like I watched that joint at least. If I could watch one one thing, I watched Martin like a thousand thousand times. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not gonna leave him out for something I watch all the time. I can't yeah. I can do it. That's not fair. That's like totally not fair. So in my fifth one, my fifth one is probably mo most people don't really m remember, but Robin Harris was the the next person. Oh, if he would have stayed on, he'd have stayed yeah. on. He would have. I still forgot been. about oh, him. Yeah. I forgot about him. Now, yeah. He was, yeah. Yeah. He was, was his, really his really scratchy funny. voice and the kid and play and all mm -hmm. that. Definitely yeah. had me. Definitely yeah. had me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He had me going. He had me going every day. So I, I only bring to you these comedies, these comedians, because they play an actual role in how the world is reversed now. Mm -hmm. My number one comedian that we definitely didn't bring up today was kind of more of a comedian, but you really didn't know it, it was Dick Gregory. Mm -hmm. And Dick Gregory Man. was funny. Yeah. He was hilarious. Paul Mooney. And Paul, well, Paul Mo see, well, Paul Mooney was more of a <laughs> tell you the truth, but y'all ain't like it. You don't like his truth. You don't like what, mm -hmm. what he really is thinking. And he's not trying to be funny, but you think it's funny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But we left out some, some. I call it my uh, six man. My six man. Only reason why I didn't put him at the top is because he took his own life personally was Robin Williams. That was my six oh. man right there. Mrs. Doubtfire. Mm -hmm. Miss Doubtfire. Mm. Oh man, that was the most funniest white man ever. I'm sorry. Yeah. Pretty, I, pretty, I, pretty, I, pretty, I, pretty. That was him yeah, and um, him. Who, who's the other white man that was in the movie with Queen Latifah? Steve. Um, I know Steve, Steve Martin. Steve Martin. Steve Martin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh yeah. That's <laughs> you know, they, they took Robin Harris, Robin Williams movies pretty much off the shelf. 
they, they? they well you know they don't want you to know the backstory of it you know what i mean on how his life went that's why i mean technically it's two people that i'll type in right now which is the bill cosby and i miss my bill i miss my bill cosby mm -hmm. i miss the whole storyline of the cosby show of the yeah. mother being a you know a lawyer and the father being a doctor i miss those storylines on how they had great family to me even if it wasn't like that it should always be something mentally like that or not not no lie my george jefferson george jefferson <laughs> oh my but he was only funny on the jefferson tv That's yeah. a, but the jefferson he did a lot of funny stuff stop it sherman hensley did amen all them other joints stop it stop it. He, he was great as a comedian on tv okay well then let's separate uh, the 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 list of comedians from stand-up comedian to no, nope. you, can't, you can't separate comedian after <laughs> what they did on a show into what they did in stand up because you haven't seen a stand up. It's stand up totally different. My take on to on today's topic, my this topic is to you. How funny do you think these comedians can play an important role on making our lives better as human beings? Can these comedians? be a comedian but also be in the active stand-up role of as an apartheid leader or a hey. fight for fight for the fight against the government <laughs> let me let me see what you know what i'm gonna stir it stir up the pot a little bit marcella what you think about that <laughs> um they they they're not political activists or humanitarians i know sometimes that power enables them to influence and they use that to um make change don't get me wrong but they comedians are neither or nor any con entertainer has any real say so about what goes on in my life and my values right. and so my answer to that would be it's a slippery slope <laughs> For because real? Um, even though you would think that it, it it it's either yes or no on or off, that that's not the facts because um, of the role that social media has and um, also branding and people's psychology. So they have a lot more influence in areas that we would <clears throat> be surprised and question whether or not they should. Okay. Mm. Okay, what about you, Miss Felicia? Oh, on, on that? <laughs> so no, I agree with I I agree with y'all. <laughs> okay, okay. What about you, Miss Michelle? Why wow, I just forgot the question next week. Because <laughs> it was deep. We, it was deep. We talking about comedians on how much of an impact they can make on the world. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, um, I'm going to be honest. Comedians did make an impact on the world. It's just the world was trying to shut them up. Okay. I I, I mean, especially Richard Pryor. Oh, my goodness. He laid the land for comedians. I mean, here you got a black man in his day <laughs> making movies and attracting the, the attention of the people. Um... That wasn't black. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, their message, you know, just for what they say in the stand-up com comedy, they can use what's happening into the world, make a joke out of it, but get their point across. Okay. So that's my thought. Colin Farrell do it all the time. Go, yeah. go ahead, go ahead, Miss Miss uh, Marcel. I, I mean, know, hold on. No, I mean, uh, uh, Miss D. Go ahead. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Miss okay, so uh, I think comedian comedians definitely can have a, a huge impact. I mean, look at what Dave Chappelle did this year. Okay, he he always has a voice. I mean, he's very calculated with his messages, but he always has a message. Okay, and that's what I appreciate so much about Dave Chappelle. If you really think about what he did with his show, you know, he, he released that 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 beautiful oration where he asked his followers to stop streaming his stuff so that they would pay him 
because they took advantage of him in his youth and in his poverty, right? Uh huh. And he won that fight. And now, you know, he has the support of his fans, and we can now happily watch his show again because I stopped watching. I, I I always watch Chappelle's show. Like, if I'm going to watch something and want to laugh, I'm going to just turn on the Chappelle show. This is just me. But I stopped because he asked us to, right? Okay. But just the fact that when he did that, and I don't know, I don't know if you did you watch when he did you watch that whole segment when he requested us to stop? So the the power behind his message and his history, his family name, where he came from, showing that you know the activism in him came from his lineage, you know, that that in itself spoke volumes. And then what he was able to do to stand up for himself to fight against the system that that consistently takes advantage of us and for him to win that fight shows that we can do something to fight for ourselves and to fight these long standing institutions that have wronged us for so long there is something we can do we can't stand and have a voice and he proved that okay it was, so it was incredible yeah. for me so can we so so me saying this can we use these actors and these comedians as a platform to better our human lives we can't we, we can use them or not i will say no and i will say this because too many of them are tools of the industry if you look right now what's going on with the vaccine right you got all these celebrities lining up saying hey look at me i'm taking the vaccine hey look at me i'm taking the vaccine lebron james what did he say that's something that we're going to discuss between me and my family and the privacy of me and my family it's too many celebrities being used as tools to 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 drive our psychology to do what 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 they, they want, want us to do. do. Okay, right. Okay. If they, if they want to get people to do something, they put celebrities out there to, to carry the message for it because we blindly follow rich people who did nothing but become wealthy. I mean, it's so just, so Miss Felicia, I'm gonna I'm ask you. So can so can a celebrity give anything about abortion and tell people that they should get abortions and stuff like that? Can they do stuff like that? You know the answer to that. I mean, <laughs> can they? They they do. They do. They 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 do what they want. I I, I agree with, with Damali. I think we've gotten so caught up into the fame and fortune of what celebrities say that uh -huh. we take it as golden. You know, um and while you was talking, I I, I just kind of remember thinking to myself, I wonder what's the, if any, what are they, what are they compensating them? Are they paying them to speak out and speak up? Let's just take the vaccine for instance. Are they compensating them to speak up and try to convince us as African Americans to go and get the vaccine? Are they compensating them or are they just doing this at free will? So when you think compensating, about blackmailing, you know. Yeah, well, and then when you think about the ab abortion piece, I mean, they, they don't, they're not, that, now that, if you think about it, they don't just come out here and expose their lives to that extent, you know? So it, it's kind of what we talked about on last night. It's double standards in one sense because people want, they only want the good that they do to be broadcasted, but you yeah. don't, you don't hear them out ranting and raving about, oh, I went and had an abortion. So, and, and rightfully so, I wouldn't want to know that they had one to be honest with you, but if you're, you know, um capitalizing on on celebrities i just think it's just who they are we put too much stock into them they're i said it last night i'll say it again they're just as human as we are magic johnson said he had AIDS, and i don't think he had it I, I mean you want me to be honest i don't think magic johnson had AIDS, not having a baby the same year same timeline same <laughs> everything I, I'm I'm still trying to ask when like you didn't you you actually gained weight you didn't lose weight like what's going on I'm trying to figure out the whole little you know you wasn't depressed about it you're still walking the, the road walking the streets happily and proud you know you say you had like a hundred thousand hey, I don't money I don't know money solves problems I man I don't know money don't know. solves problems I, I can't see I don't know I don't know he money didn't lose solves no problems right I don't know I don't know I don't know it just don't it just doesn't add up it. I'm just saying, don't add up. I mean, don't get me being the uh, a million known. plus a million plus a million adds up to a solution. Still, it don't seem right. <laughs> it don't seem. Don't tell me you got something and I don't see no side effects. Like it doesn't make sense to me. I need, <laughs> I need, I need the proof is in the pudding as you land there in the bed. But you know, you was you never laid there. You you never got sick. Like you could still play ball. Like are you gonna touch the bat? People don't want to touch the basketball because oh, it's magic. No, no, no. They're still touching the basketball. Everything. <laughs> it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't add up. It just. Mm. 
makes to me it made no he made no focal point of trying to traditionally say he's an athlete and then wreck the world with saying he's an athlete i got this disease nobody else should do the things i've been doing like hold up wait a minute wait a minute don't go out here and and do the things you're doing because you have a disease no this is not adding up it just didn't add up to me it came in wrong it came in as soon as they won it was like oh oh i, I won a championship i'm going to florida i'm going to disney world you know what i'm saying but next thing you know you're like i got hiv i got aids wait a minute hold up one cup. i'm about to have a child tomorrow I'm like what wait wait, wait. <laughs> it's not adding up just doesn't add up so I'm just giving a, a focal point on understanding how the philosophy of if you're an actor or actress or a comedian, just because you're funny, can you really change the parameters of how human beings are actually living their lives? I mean, if you think of the Nick Cannon of the world, if he says something that's totally different or totally off script from what the writers and producers ask him to do, he's going to get slapped on the wrist for it. And, and technically, I think they can make a difference because one word means so much in this world if you're watching it on TV and it went so many ways around. So can, how about I say this? Can human beings change each other's lives just by being on this spectrum? Can, can Michelle, can you change anybody's life just by being on a social, some type of social media? How can they listen to you? Can you change anything? Most definitely, every day, all day. I okay. mean, that's what that's what the young people and even the adults, whether they admit it or not, do. Whatever they see, we already spoke about this. Whatever they see, the Kardashians doing. Whatever they see, like y'all said, celebrities do. They will follow them because they put them on a the pedestal. They think highly of them. So if you allow other people to change your lives because what you think they have and what you think they are then yes, you know, I don't think that they should use the celebrities as an example to make people change their mind for the vaccine or, you know, how, or whatever in the world that's going on. And I and I appreciate um, LeBron James saying what he said. It's none of y'all business of what me and my family going to do. Some people do it for the show. Some people do it for prestige. Some people do it where if I say this, then I could get what I need. I could, I could get the um, limelight. I could get the attention to make people say, oh, okay, she got the vaccine. Let's check her out for this, this movie here, this movie there. People do it because they got motives behind it. Okay. But uh, I was talking know, about you, though. I was saying what? you. What? If, do if, I if, you this, if you had this platform right now, how could you change one person that's not any of us? How can you change? Are we get, talking given, about you? To get, telling them about my life experience, my okay. true life experience. I have to agree with you on the on the Magic Johnson thing, but it's also called money. <laughs> I'm serious. It's also called money. And if he if there's really a true, if there's really a cure for a, the AIDS or HIV, or there's a medicine out there where it doesn't let it manifest to the fullest. Then it costs a whole lot of money to get that bad book. But anywho, I give people my true life experience. I'll tell people, regardless of what you're going through, whether you went, you're homeless. You know, for me, if I'm homeless, I was homeless. You know, sleeping in my car and for what, almost three, what, two, two months, almost two months. You know, but the whole thing was I still kept working. Okay. You know, I still I still kept taking care of my clients. I still had a business. And the crazy part about it is, you know, I had to trust God. See, it's stuff like that that you could change people's life. I trusted God and, and and he had to show me, Michelle, I can bless you even in your in your worst storm, sleeping in your car. And I got more business sleeping in my car than I did before I got evicted. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't have the money to pay, you know, for being self-employed and have a the money to pay my uh, rent. Okay. So, yes, you can use your platform to make a difference in your life, but use your own experiences, not somebody else. And before you open your mouth, make sure what you're about to say, you know, will change somebody's life. Okay, what about you, Miss Felicia? Can, if you had the same platform as 
actors or artists or comedians, how could you change or, or anything? How could what could you do to change this parameter of the world or people that you want to influence? You mute it. You mute it. <laughs> you talking to me? Yes. <laughs> so, what can I do to change the parameter of the world? I'm in a whole nother zone today. Like, I just posted something a few moments ago on social media. Like, okay. I am, I, Damali, you said it last night. Do you, do me, I'm doing me. Like, I'm doing me today. Like, I guess you're, it's to answer your question, for me today, I joy in helping others. I joy in giving back. But I do it from a sense of integrity. I do it from a sense of oftentimes people don't even have anything to give me back in return. Right? So as we as we plow this field, when you compare the, the celebrities to us ordinary people today, we just, we make it happen. Like you don't hear me out ranting and raving about the vaccine or you don't hear me out ranting and raving about this, that, or the other, but I do me in order to be a help or a blessing to somebody else. Does that make sense? Yeah. Perfect. Sir. <laughs> perfect. Okay. Okay. What about you, Miss, Miss D? Uh, I think definitely, I think even without a platform, I mean, the beautiful thing about social media is everybody kind of has a platform to influence and, you know, share their experiences with whoever they're connected to. And I think that, you know, if you choose to share your challenges and your triumphs and your ups and your downs and, you know, especially, you know, sharing the path you went through to overcome certain things, it's very inspirational. It can inspire people to take action for themselves. I'll give you an example for me. I've been talking about going vegan for like six months now. Uh, my Facebook friend posted her one year anniversary of going vegan last January or no, last February. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, it's time. And the next day I just started just like that. So yeah, we have the power to, to influence and change people's lives and inspire people to change themselves. Yeah, definitely. Hi, Miss Marcella. What about you? Yeah, I, I would agree with D. Um, actually, I wanted to bring it from a different, uh, uh, an additional perspective, and that is um, lives are not changed until the person determines that there's one need for change, and two that where they are, where they stand at that particular time is more painful than changing. So th those are the conditions even before I can influence anybody. I feel that um, as long as you are moving within universal law, astuteness and balance, then th the people that you can interact with will appear. And so, yes, entertainers have huge platforms to use at their whim about things that they get paid for or believe in. Which one that which one it is, we have no way of knowing. <laughs> um, so to answer your question, I, I feel that I have influence. I might I have a platform and I would change, you know, people's lives through being an example and also being non-judgmental. Um being able to relate, like many of us have stated, is is you know, the first form of connection because you can't really respectfully move somebody or impact them in a way that's profound without at least knowing their journey and being able to relate on some degree. Mr. B, your question is just broad. Just to simply put it, yes. I okay. <laughs> well, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. reason why I stated that is because I, I am an educator and technically I, I've had kids from pre-K all the way to the 12th grade at this point. And um, me as an educator, I think I've been very impactful as a music teacher. Um, one, one year I was at a school for three years and every time I walked into the building, I had to come through a whole nother door because the school just felt as though I was like this super celebrity walking through the door. So I was like, oh, Mr. Bam, Mr. Bam, he's here, he's here. It was like, 
Mr. B, you got to go through a whole nother door. These kids have to eat their breakfast. I'm like, it's breakfast. Like, I got to come to school every day. What's going on? You're like, you just got them all stirred up. So me personally, as an impactful person to build kids and make them the happiest kids ever as a music teacher, it's about building their self self care about who they are as people you know even the shyest kid in the class is technically my most musician my best musician like i could pull out you know anybody or any kid like you wouldn't even know that you you were that mother like that was my son that did that yes that was your son that did that he couldn't even play one note to till, till, till he met me that's that's right so it's all about the power of perception like my my little my little kids that I like to use, I like to use my Supremes. These little girls with his three kids. I was like, you know, their whole class got depleted because of COVID and everything. They're like, it's only three of us. I'm like, you know, it's okay to be just three of y'all. You know, it's so many powerful women out there, you know, just three girls, you know, they had a group. They were like, well, which ones? I was like, okay, well, let's go. We can go ahead. Which one y'all want to go with? Y'all want to go with rap or y'all want to go with singing? It was like, we want to go with singing. I was like, all right, we can choose the Supremes. So I chose the Supremes and they mimic Supremes, the words, the moves, and their actions show that I really knew how to impact these kids regardless of the situation. I built them up with their hearts and soul put forth in their talent. You know what I mean? So I say to you when I when I say to this, it one person that I can make, I can touch one person, I feel as though I can touch every person at this point. So that's why I was giving you all that impact on saying ladies why how could you impact the world in your phase of what you're doing today to make other people lives better because i I mean me personally i my ultimate goal is to write checks i don't know how how that's going to happen but i just want to just write checks just write people checks like what what did you say boom what did you okay okay you you need this boom i just want to start writing checks i mean whether it's in art whether it's my music i just want to be writing stupid amount of just checks for company i'm the person to put my name on it like i spent so long just writing sentences at this point of my name like i my name is so hard to spell you wouldn't believe how long it took me to get my own particular uh, what does I call it? Shorthand for for my drawings that you see in the background, or the longhand for when you're writing these checks. So yes, I spent time to just work on myself on how I write these checks. Okay, well let me just go ahead and move on to one of my hard phases of a conversation, and this conversation is probably going to be another little steamy hot topic that you know seems to. I seem to hit these little topics off at the end. Mm-hmm. So I'm glad I hit these topics off in the end. Um, I have something to say about how the reaction of the men particularly react to women when they're upset. And I, I want to, I want to ask these questions because you never know what, each party is thinking now, you know, they, you know, I know I'm thinking a little bit wild just by asking these questions, but this question, you know, is kind of a low blow. So I do y'all know, I do know I can give you a particular story on the Ray Rice story. You know, you remember when Ray Rice was, uh, he's a fo- ex football player that hit his wife, well, hit his girlfriend at the time in the elevator. They went in the elevator and now before the, before I'm gonna give you the go whole, whole story of what I seen on video, but mm-hmm. on the video show she was smacking him around like just smacking him around right. But as soon as he got into that elevator, he cold knocked her out, and then tried to drag her out the out of the elevator as she was knocked unconscious. You know what I mean? So I want your story and your take on this on violence between the man and woman and how heated this these battles can get how i need to know what is the difference of this woman and male violence between each other in a heated relationship go ahead miss felicia go ahead please let me go first (laughs) so you know i can't even phantom it number one um i'm just old school i you know, 
you keep your hands to yourself and I'm gonna keep my hands to myself. At the end of the day, the bottom line is we don't we we don't have the right to put our hands on each other. And I think that's where we get so caught up into this, well, what happened, you know, mode sometimes because then we start justifying this kind of stuff, right? First of all, I don't agree with her slapping him around, whatever, especially in public. I don't agree with that at all because there is a level of respect that a man is owed, especially when he's in public, right? You don't get him out and, and embarrass him to that extent. So that's probably why he knocked the crap out of her. Not that that's right, but at the end of the day, we got to realize y'all that, was it you, Damali, said it last night or somebody said it? We, we, we came from that slave mentality. We came from that beating mentality. We beat others because we've been beat. So when I hear of men and women fighting, <laughs> I, I just it goes over my head because out of all due respect, now my younger year, years, yeah, my ex um, jumped on me. You know, I encountered that. But I'm 51 years old. I keep telling y'all this. I'm in my 50s. I ain't been to fight with a man. And I think it comes to a point where men don't. Whew, at that age, <laughs> at that age, you ain't got no business slapping a woman around. And so I think a lot of it is the mentality level, the maturity level, of uh, the way we view each other as spouse, as husband, as wife, as boyfriend, as girlfriend. That's where a lot of all this mess come from with us jumping on each other and fighting each other because we don't value each other. Nobody has the right to put their hands on on, on you. And, and you know, I ain't gonna say I wish my husband would, but I wish my husband would. <laughs> it would be on and popping. I just don't, I can't- Literally. Laugh. Pop, because uh -huh. I ain't fighting nobody. I will shoot your ass if you hit me. <laughs> pow, pow. My pow. Oh, my okay. I ain't gonna do that. Like, I ain't just gonna waste my time on no nah, baby. We ain't gonna fight. You ain't gonna put your hands on me. And the minute you do, it's all over, said and done. So I just, I think, you know, I'm not trying to circumvent your question, but there's just a reality. Women ain't got no business putting their hands on men, and men ain't got no business putting their hands on women. It's just one thing and simple to me. What what about you, Miss 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 uh, Gunsl Gunslinger? <laughs> My girl. Well, first of all, it's the levels of dis disrespect between yeah. men and women. It's just it's crazy. Like, uh, first of all, from the younger generation, I would say you know there there is no no from what I see there is no you're a woman I'm not gonna hit you barrier anymore. These young guys will will unleash on these girls. It is what it is. And I think, you know, we feed into that with, with the smearing of the gender lines and everybody's the same and men competing with women in sports. And, you know, there's just not a risk. There's no, there's, there's not a certain level of respect between the genders, first of all. Um, second of all, within our own community, just the psychology of our relationships and how, you know, women are, are taught that they are, to be strong and independent and to not need that man. And therefore, when that man does something that's out of pocket, we go full out mouthy and disrespectful. So okay. my thing is women keep your mouth off of him. First of all, you, we, we are killers with the tongue. I mean, we can say some stuff to men that will totally break them down and never touch them. And that's, and black women are the coldest at that period. And it's so sad right. to see, you see it. It's so sad to see a woman break down and speak in such a derogatory way to her man. And on the flip side, it's so, it's in the music. It's like a normal part of the culture for a man to easily slip out and call his woman all kinds of four letter words. It's just, it's just a cultural norm, <laughs> the, especially in the younger generation. It's, there, there's no, there's no respect at all as a, as far as, I'm a man. I'm your protector. There's no, there's no, no understanding that. Okay. Hey, if I'm here and I'm in, I'm in trouble, and I see a black man right there, or a man, period. I'm not 100 percent secure that I would receive help from that person if I was in trouble. That's just how we are right now in society. So, I think from one 
black women need to learn how to hold their tongues and black men need to learn how to hold their hands, keep them hands to themselves on both ways and vice versa, vice versa. Where, where, wherever the, the abuse is coming from, verbally, physically, both parties need to learn how to control those emotions. And that's basically what it is. We don't have any strategies for conflict resolution within the black community. We don't know how to talk things through. Okay. We just we just fight, 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 escalate, escalate until it's just it's too late. You know, okay. step back, take a breath, seek an understanding. You know, are we are we really fighting? Are we really even having the same conversation? First of all, you know, it's a lot of miscommunication and just assumptions and ego. We just gotta take a step back and do better. What about you, Miss Michelle? I totally agree with what the Molly said. Um, if you don't want to get hit back, then keep your hands to yourself. Bottom line. Okay. Just like we say, and yeah, some people may not like this. Just like we say, when somebody's attacking a woman, she needs to defend herself. Well, men have to defend themselves from the woman. Um, you know, if I go lunging at my man thinking that he's not going to hear me, hit me, then you got another thing coming because he has to protect himself too. It doesn't work one, you know, it doesn't, it works both ways, not just one sided. And for the men, you know, if she doesn't buck at you or, you know, lunge at you, you need to keep your hands to yourself also. Now I will say us women, we do get out of hand you know, and we say things to hit a man below the belt, which will make them blow a fuse. So, yeah, keep your mouth shut. You know, you hurting two, two hurt people ain't going to make a right. Somebody going to end up hurt badly. You think you're hurting internally, you're going to be uh, feeling being hurt physically. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So two hurts don't make a right. So, you know, I know me. <laughs> When I, when I get mad, if I start laughing and I walk away, let me walk away. It ain't because I'm scared. It's because I'm about to bust your head to the white meat. So instead of catching a case, I'm just going to go ahead and, and move on. I'm serious. If I walk away and I'm laughing, that, that tells you I am pissed. Because I, I have two kids to um, live for now. I ain't trying to catch a case because of your foolishness. But anywho, that's not that's beyond the point. I'm sorry. I just had a memory flash. But anywho, keep your hands to yourself, women. Keep your mouth shut. Don't hit below the belt. Because if you don't want him hitting you, even though men should keep their hands to themselves too. But if you don't want him lunging at you because you hit him below the belt, because you damaged, just like we don't want our feelings to be hurt. We don't want you calling us out. Men don't want it to be called out either. It works both ways. It's all it's called respect, bottom line. Marcella, what, what, what's your take on it? Oh, okay, so, you know, the world needs love. And sometimes people who love each other get into it and it spills over into violence, unfortunately, right? I don't think Ray Wright should have beat his wife down in the elevator like that. That was obviously abuse. When I saw it, I was shocked. Okay, so okay. I'm just going to answer that right then and there. But that reminded me of like Bobby and Whitney. You know what I'm saying? Everybody know people, couples like that, that just be out in public. You 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 want to invite them to the party, but then you don't want to invite them to the party because you know it's going to end in mayhem, right? So when I when I saw that, I I said, oh come on now, you know. And then you know you could tell by the dynamic that they fight and get down with that probably all the time. It seemed like that was the dynamic of that relationship. Ray Rice was punished more than that quarterback who was fighting pit bulls. I forgot his name. He used to play Mike for Vick. the Eagles. Mike Vick. Mike Vick. So it, it tells you what the judicial system and the system in the U.S. thinks about it because I'm going to connect the two. Um, I feel that Ray Rice, yeah, he was punished. You know, they set him down. But Mike Vick went to jail. The... The balance is off. Okay. You see what I'm saying? We we value animals' lives more than other people. Correct. I don't think that anybody should be hitting on each other because somebody's going to get hurt. 
<laughs> and usually it's the person who is physically weaker, but not okay. always, you okay. know? So, you know, give respect where respect do it. If you can't keep your hands off each other, I mean, like hands off each other. I don't mean loving hands. I mean, violent. if you got to get violent, then there's a trigger. Yeah, these type of hands then it's, it's a trigger or something. And so, right. to, and like I said, to answer your question, I don't think it's okay. Like we was talking about Carly B in one session. We talked about Bill Cosby. I don't think it's okay for anybody to victimize anyone, well, whether they know, want to deserve it or not. See, this is a touchy, touchy situation because the simple fact, he premeditated kind of to me as I watched the video, like he, and he got beat up a little bit and then he took the time to wait. So that means he thought about it until he got into the elevator thinking nobody was going to see anything, not knowing that an elevator still has a camera in it. So he was mm -hmm. thinking, but he wasn't thinking. Like He's thinking, oh, nobody's going to see this. But when you're dragging her out limp like that, I mean, it's totally different. The, the, the back story is, in order for him not to go to jail, she had to marry him. Mm -hmm. She married the man after this incident. So I didn't know that. My question is to you. What, well, I already know what Felicia going to say, but would you have married him after that? Felicia? Bye bye. Bye bye. <laughs> you are rich to know. He wouldn't be like you said. Like you said, you already know. I think that's now that that's blasphemy. If you ask me, you know, you don't you that there's nothing under the sun that could even justify that. Um, now when he kill her, I, I, I am, I'm just saying, I mean, reality, he, she, she lowered herself to those standards, right? I wish I would, <laughs> I, I wish I would, like, you don't get to beat me. You, you beat me one time. That's it. You might not, you might make it out, but the second time I ain't going to do it. So at the end of the day, the fact that they went public with this and it, it happened publicly and mm. then she turns around and she marries him to keep him from getting into some type of legalities says oh i accept what you did to me but oh, i never thought of it that way but okay she accepted what he did to her she that she just sanctioned it she signed her name on the dotted line to say beat me beat me beat me <laughs> nothing else to say about that. i can't see i I don't want to speak before everybody else speak, but I beg to differ on that. That's oh, not yeah, my, I don't have to disagree. That's not my take on that, Miss Felicia. I'm trying that's to tell right. you. I mean, you I gonna mean, be, you gonna let she, me beat you and then turn around and marry you? It was like she it was like she just cast a check to me. Exactly. It was like I'm telling you, you put your hands on me again, you're <laughs> definitely going down for the rest of your yeah. life. I'm about to get paid. I'm trying to tell you. I just so, think but why she, you think he thinking? Oh, she just she she married I mean, me because of the money, but, but I can beat her. That's not what I said. I but said she you? cast the check, not him thinking. No, no, ma'am. She cast that check, meaning after he hit her, no matter what, he cannot do that again. Yeah. Oh, you you like oh, it's gonna happen again? Are you crazy? Yes, sure that, sure is. Is, that check is because cast. We, that's, why I, that's why. That's <laughs> why. That's why I said what I said. Think about what he's thinking. So I can imagine what she's thinking. Oh, I just got paid, but he's thinking, oh, I just got me a. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. He he's definitely not going to hit her again. Not even remotely think about it. I mean, you if he that? thinks about it, all oh, he's going to lose everything. He. He can't get any more money from the NFL, so he's gonna lose everything. Everything. What repercussion did he have from that? What I mean, he didn't. He didn't lose nothing in that. He he's not playing everything. again. He's not. He, he, yeah, he's got to be seventy-two NFL. million. I didn't know that. He they never he got, got was for yeah. seventy-two million dollars. He lost every last everything. dime of that. He can't yep. play again. He's not like Ben Roethlisberger, where he raped this girl and she just. Right. All of a sudden, didn't even bring up the story ever again. Never came to type deal. No, he, everybody knows that she got hit. Everybody saw mm -hmm. it. So technically, yeah. they just ousted him like that. They just totally yeah. ousted him because they he canceled, canceled him. Yeah. So now that him. they're married, that means he can get reinstated back on the team? No, ma'am. No. Now that they're married, he, he can't go to jail. Yeah, he, he's not going to be a football player either. He That's lost right. his job and his life, his his freedom. That's, what is your take? What is your take on this? 
Miss Michelle, what is what is your take on that? Uh, I agree with Miss Felicia. She still married him, even though she she knew he put hands on her because she knew she was gonna have a lifestyle that she always wanted and was willing willing to put money over love and 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 life. Because at one point, when you beat somebody the way you beat them. You know, sometimes you can't you can't predict if you're gonna come out of it alive. So you know, I if you see the signs early, and I could I could say this from experience, if you see the signs early in a relationship that you don't like, that you you really don't want to have a part in your life, walk away. No matter how lonely you are, no matter how much money they have, <clears throat> walk away. Because it's not worth it. There's something out there better. You just got to believe in yourself that you're worth life. You're worth somebody else's love that's just going to gonna treat you the way you want to be treated. That's all I got to say. Marcel. And that goes for the men as well. Because we're not going to sit here and act like she wasn't beating on him before he knocked her out. So to my brothers, it don't matter how big the booty is or how voluptuous the breasts are. If she's crazy... <laughs> Let her go or you're going to lose everything. It's too many brothers losing too much stuff over crazy women. Period. Can I, pick, can I piggyback off of that? Like she wasn't beating him before he knocked her out. <laughs> so, and, and the thing is, you know, she attracted what she wanted. If she's a violent person, she attracted a violent person. So she's in her world. She's, she's in a world that she came from. <laughs> she's in a world that she attracted. So we're not going to sit here and act like, you know, she wasn't violent, too. You know, I, I think they were made for each other, basically. <laughs> they answered violence with violence, you know. She's smacking him. He's smacking her. You know, hey, he lost his NFL contract. She got a paycheck, and she's waiting. Oh, if it happens again, she can divorce him and still be well off for the rest of her life. So, yeah, I mean, of course she married him. That's so true. he wouldn't, you know, probably thinking he had a chance to get back in the NFL, but it didn't happen. So I mean, we, you but want we, to piggyback we before we can't, we can't put all the blame on Ray. He was okay. dealing with the violent woman, him being a violent man as well. So you can't put it all on him. Okay, okay. Yeah. You want to piggyback Michelle before Marcella knock it out, right? Yeah. And men, there's some ugly women or not so good women out there that will love your dirty draws, and you don't have to spend a whole lot of money. Treat them right; they'll love you, and that's all that matters. So if you want to attract crazy, then you're going to get crazy and lose everything. But there are some not so good looking women and a few big hefty women that would love your dirty draws, do whatever you want them to do, and you won't have no problems in life. Okay? Stop trying to pick all these pretty dumb looking women that came a cook, know how to back a man up, stand by him, submit and everything else, you just want them for eye candy. Bump that. Get, get, get your priorities straight, you know? So, yeah, I wanted to say that. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead wow. Marcella. Who? Um... <laughs> Marcella said, who? Yeah, yeah that, that was a lot. Okay, so, um, no, violence, violence, um, violence kills. And so I, I know sometimes with, with passion, um, people who 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 has a certain type of love for each other will, will start slinging hands and everything, but mm. th but that don't work. It, it's not acceptable. Um, for Ray Rice to lose his whole career over that, I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, especially since she married him, I, I'm not sure if, if that was if, if they needed to take such a strong stance. Unfortunately, some people become the poster boy or girl and are punished because politically somebody wants to make a statement. And at that time, it was violence against women, I suppose. Um, usually I'm a sympathizer, right? But I'm, I'm, I'm really not. Because you know, like Michelle said something that they oh, kind of sympathizing on this one. What? I, well, no, I'm just, I'm just saying. Um, nobody deserves to be beat down, whether they look good or not, right? Okay. And so I know Michelle didn't mean it. You know, like if, if you know, get you, you know, go get yourself somebody that, that that's not physically attractive that you got to beat down. I, 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 <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't saying that. I was saying, 
Oh, I'm sorry. You know what? That did come across that. Let me clarify real quick. If you a man that likes to put your hands on it, stay single. But if you a man that looks good from head to the toe and you tired of having these dumb women, there are some not so good looking. That's what I really, really, really miss. Seriously. No, no, there's, some no, not no. So, there's some not so good looking women or some hefty women out there that would love your dirty draws. And everything else. That's what I mean. I didn't mean for a man that do put hands on women to go find that. I do apologize. I gotta clear that up because this is on national oh, news. I don't Let think me you meant it like that, that either. You, yeah. you probably well, so, so yeah, so there, there, there's the point I wanted to make. Um, violence don't have a look though. You can have yourself a mud duck and be getting beat down. <laughs> you know. And we do, we don't take it seriously when a woman's beating a man up, especially if she's petite and she's attractive. Now, if she looks big and strong like that one lady we was talking about, Leslie, um, somebody. Right, you, you know, ain't, ain't going to hear her. You ain't going to hear her. You know, you know, you see him get beat down, but, you know, it's like you kind of understand. But for somebody that might be petite, like Michelle, Felicia, and Damali, because I'm like 5'9". You know what I'm saying? So oh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm five. I'm five eight. I'm not. I'm not. Five, oh, you mean petite for his height or weight? Height and everything. I mean, if if, if you were to, if you were to be beating up a man out in in public, you know, they would probably laugh at the guy versus somebody like me and and, and D because we're kind of tall. We looking him in the eyes. We going face to face, and we probably rolling on him. You know. <laughs> So, you know, you still got the stereotypes of, you know, who's doing the beating and who's getting beat. <laughs> and if, if, it's, if it's a small defenseless woman, I, I would say if, if 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 his if his girlfriend looked like um Leslie, tall and just as athletic as him, or Serena, I don't know that the public outcry would be the same because the perception would be these are strong looking women that could protect mm -hmm. themselves. His girlfriend was obviously very petite. And so I saw it, but to me, you know, it just looked like uh, a disagreement. Okay, so you're saying, <laughs> we're saying if, if y'all was in the same weight class, that if things would be a little bit different on how people would, how, how their perception would be in that whole entire scuffle. Oh, yes, oh you'd be right. like, it'd be like Ike and Tina, and, and Tina's getting her man, you know what I mean? She whooping on Ike, she whooping on Ike. <laughs> I That's mean, I mean, I mean, just a classic. Yeah, I was going to go. To, I was going to go to this, but I'm, I still want to hit home with how how the understanding of of the men and women role has really the perception of of how dangerous you're saying this violent act is, but how is actually the perception of it is what is what my take on it is. I mean, how dangerous is this now that she's married him? You kind of. Kind of scares me a little bit how y'all say, you know, she married him and she gonna do it, he's gonna do it again. You know, I said, I said she signed a paycheck, meaning it can't happen again because if it happens again, she's going to get seriously paid, you know what I'm saying? And not only will she get paid, he's gonna be in the bottom of the jail. I'm pretty sure he already knows the act is pretty much over. You know, now they're actually speaking about this. They're like speakers on relationships on how to fix these violent relationships. But when I come, when I come at you ladies on this aspect, you know, have y'all ever let a man just get, have y'all ever gotten into a man's face and really try to check his ass? Excuse my language on that. Have you ever, no. and you know what? You know what I see? Nah, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and ask Miss Felicia. Have you ever <laughs> you already checked know. your man? So, so let me check him. Get it, it like, not, get here. Get I'm here with running. it. Get here. No, no, no. Hear me. I run from the fight. I'm really not a fighter. Fighter. I'm not your violent type of girl. Like I, I know. I'm kind of like Michelle. I'm gonna walk away. I'm gonna do something to get myself out of that situation. Um. Just don't push my back up against the wall. I think that's just me. Like for me, don't don't trap me. Let me out. Let me let me leave. Let me get away. Because uh, right about now, it's best that I do. But I'm not. I'm not gonna just get in a man's face and just go on and on and on with him. Even when I was younger, I didn't do that. That's not me as a woman. And I see, you know, young girls that do do it. But I just, it ain't worth it to me. Like, you, what what point are you proving? 
Um, there's been many a times, even, you know, in marriage, my husband and I've had heated conversations. We both know how to walk away. We know. You ain't get in his grill, like digging his grill. Let me talk to you for a second. Let me dig in, just get in his face. Like really. Yeah, I ain't going to do that. For I'm real. That. And he ain't going to do it to me. So we good. <laughs> so, okay. So y'all have never had an encounter where you legitimately. No, no got that's you. what I'm saying. We don't, we don't do that. We don't roll like what that. What about like, you, Marcella? Mm-mm. I refuse. Mm -mm. No. No, you can't win. You can't win. <laughs> Everybody's to be respected. I want a man to respect my um femininity. So I'm going to respect his masculinity. I'm not going to I'm not going to win physically. I'm not going to win. No, I'm not that stereotypical crazy black woman that they depict um in the media we don't fight our men most of us a great majority of us don't fight our men any more than any other woman fight um their 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 compliment i would say that um if it's a violent dynamic like we said you know it, it's going to require some treatment some separation you know it, it just doesn't bode well for it could be the, the 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 woman or the man so no we don't we don't we love our men we don't beat our men up miss miss d you, you 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 will never step to him. I understand you got this, you know, you got this. All right. You have to yeah. understand where I'm first of all, I know myself. Okay. Very well. So I work very hard not to take myself to the point of anger that I can go to and, and just blast off into another like I no. <laughs> I make sure I stay calm because an uncalm Damali is not a Damali anybody in this world wants to see. Okay. Period. So no, I, when it comes to me and my husband, you know, and and if we have arguments, I respect my husband. You know, I'm gonna reiterate, I am married to an African original Igbo Nigerian man. I'm not yelling at my husband. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I'm, I'm not. We have, you know, we just, I, I just, this is not my personality. I'm, I am a submissive wife. Um. You know, my husband respects me very much and I respect him, you know, and I submit, you know, if we have a disagreement and we can't agree on something. He has a final word, period. And I'm good with that because, you know, you can still win with the second best idea. Right. You know, yeah. So, <laughs> I'm just saying, but um, yeah, no, I just I, I refuse to, to yell. And the one time I did yell at my husband and it was so heated, I was on my way out the door, not to his face. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> Okay. Nah, not gonna do it. Now, what about you, Miss Michelle? What about you? You are shaking your head now, now, now. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna yell at him. I know how to talk to you in a nice, nasty way to get my <laughs> point across and let you know to leave me the hell alone. <sighs> I know. I'm serious. Why? Why should I get myself all worked up? And I walk. And and to clarify. I ain't walking away because I'm scared. I'm walking away because I like the Molly said. I'm scared of my own self. I saw myself blow up one time and I scared my own self. I started crying and I was like, oh, I can't get to this point. Never again. I ain't never felt that much anger in my life for that person to the point where I had heal in my eyes. Literally. And I'm a born again Christian. I was like, the devil is alive. You ain't sending me to hell because of your stupidness. So yes, <laughs> I'm gonna walk away because mm -hmm. I ain't going to hell because you want to act stupid with me and you let the devil push my buttons that he knew to push. So yeah, okay. I'm gonna walk away and I'm gonna talk to my man in a nice, nasty way. <laughs> and all I gotta do is give you a look and let my let my body language for me ignoring you throughout the whole household and everything else let you know you piss me off, leave me alone, and until you come correct, then we can sit down and talk. That's how you do it. Now, I'm a submissive person. Don't get me wrong, but if he kisses me off, then he had to really do something to be like... I think you and, really you and mm -hmm. Felicia got... Y'all got that sarcasm that... Like, <laughs> yeah. See what I'm saying? I know, I, know like, I can hear it. I can hear y'all saying something smart. And yeah, if you don't catch, I, on, I, I, catch I, up on it, if you don't catch yeah. on it, you, you have to remember it. Like, oh, you know what? She said something to me. Like, you got to remember it. Like, I know y'all. Yeah, I'm like Damali. I know when to be quiet. I, I do. Exactly. I know when to just, 
Exactly. I know when to hold them, and I, yeah. when, I know when to fold them. I ain't right. Michelle, Michelle said she didn't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to jail. So I call myself. <laughs> well, let, let's put that together, Demala. Yeah. I ain't going to hell, and I ain't going to jail. Okay. Right? Print, look, so, print the clothes do not look good on me, and it was shall right? not be. Okay. You know, so has some key points. She has some key points tonight that I really want to touch yeah. touch bases on. And my number one base that I want to touch on is about is about sports. Now, should women play the same sports as men? And my only regards to that is because I watched. See, I watched a couple little little things. I watched like okay, I watched this football joint where the women had these little skimpy uh, bikinis on, but they had shoulder pads, right? And they were playing football. It, it was it was suspect. Like me personally, I was watching it. I watched maybe like four games, and I was like, okay, I'm never watching this again. But I tried it. I tried to watch it, but then. Then, then you know, I'm not gonna lie to y'all. I watched this basketball game, and these women they were oversized and they had oversized rump, so it was like oversized rump basketball, you know what I'm saying? They was just, you know, what I'm saying some people could dribble, some people couldn't, you know what I'm saying? It was playing a lot of defense, it was a lot of defense going on. So, I watched that, and I just want to know, can can women play the same sports as men and be treated fairly? Because it it seemed really like misconstrued on how they had it viewed. Like my view on it was like, what is going on? So I want to know. I want to know your your understanding of can men? You know what? Go ahead, Michelle. Since you since you shaking your head no on this one, let me hear what you got to say about can men and women play the same sports? No, Correct. and, that's, and that's, no. I mean, there's some women that could go toe to toe with some men, but no, because y'all never give us the same respect. A, a man's sport is a man's sport. A woman's sport is a woman's sport. Even though there's more man's sport, men's sports than women's sports. So, like, if a woman was to play football, when I was young, I was a tomboy. They used to call me Herschel Walker. I had big knock <laughs> knockouts. And I would run with that ball, and they couldn't catch me from Kingdom Come. I was a fast runner. I played with the boys. I was tackling and everything. However, you know, no. You know, I mean, football is not made for women as far as frame-wise, unless we get ourselves so big and thick that we could, you know, accept the, the physical physicality part of it. But no, nah, basketball. Now, I will say basketball is a women's sport, but the men, the the men won't give us the same respect because they say we have a certain, a different style or different technique. It's not manly. Yeah, no, it, it hands down, no. And you already know, no, because it, like you said, if a big booty woman came in there and was running down the aisle, uh, uh, uh running down the court with the basketball, they ain't gonna be looking at her skills. They're gonna be looking at her behind. You look at. Some, Look at Serena Williams when that cameraman when she had on that leopard or that black print um, outfit and he concentrated on the butt versus her raising it up to see her swing. No. I'll watch the tennis match just because she looks good on there though. I ain't gonna lie. I'm no you know, no hater. No hater. What about you, Miss D? I think women can play the same sports as men. Maybe not with them, but yeah, I have um I have um a PV associate that uh, played or has played professional women uh, football. And um, I respect them as athletes. You know, I respect professional athletes, period. But I think it's a shame that when it comes to the women's football league, that they have to wear bikinis, you know, that they can't just wear a fully protected, a fully covering protective football uniform to play because sports are still controlled by men right men control the women's football league so you have women running around trying mm -hmm. to play football in a damn bikini so i think that if you know we actually let women control more of the things that they're involved in it probably would be a better turnout you would attract more young girls to it because it's not all about the male perspective in the sport. You know, you can you can create heroes for young girls to to let them know that they can do anything they want to do. But we have women out here playing football in bikinis. 
Miss Miss Felicia. I think it's nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just nasty if you ask me. I mean, okay, I can slice it. When you were talking about the women with the bikinis and then the shoulder pads, it that, it just don't go together. Okay. There ain't no combination whatsoever. That ain't the perfect combination. That's the horrible. I mean, when you think about it, I don't even want to envision it. Envision it. But, okay. Equal rights, I get it. Women just, you know, y'all. Now I'm gonna get. I'm kind of like um, Marcel on this one. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go opposite. Women need to stay in their place sometimes. You know. <laughs> Bottom line. Thank you. Thank you. I didn't want to say it, but I had to say it. No, I'm serious. Everything is not for women. Everything is not for women. Mm -mm. Yeah, everything's not for Bottom women. Line. Bottom line. Y'all, y'all, nobody else clap. <laughs> <laughs> I, just think we, I just think we shouldn't put up, you know, I, I, I just, I am firmly against something is not for a woman. I think if it's for you, it's for you and it should be your own decision. And if there's enough women out there to form a, a professional women's football league, then there should be a professional women's football league, period. <laughs> and I don't think <laughs> there should be, and I don't think they should be playing in bikinis. Because men are ruling the women's professional football league. Okay, okay. I, think I agree with you. Place. I agree with you, Damali. But I guess it's a 50-50. Mm -hmm. you, what you say is true. It has very much light to it. But there's just some things that's just not created for a woman to do. I mean, I'm, football wasn't created for men. Look at how much how bad their bodies come out. Football wasn't even created for men. Men can't even survive it. It's not created for human beings. So how do you think it's what is then how you think it's good for a woman then? Even if she did it's, build her body to that point. It's not good for either one of their bodies, but if they choose to go into that profession, they should be able to. Marcella, what what do you what do you think on that? Well, I'm, I'm enjoying the, I'm I'm enjoying the dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> um, I agree with D. I think that women should play with e each other. Um, that didn't come out right, but you know what I meant, right? Uh -huh. They should have women's sports, <laughs> and they should have men's sports. I do believe that if you so desire and you want to do something, I know that was funny. <laughs> do it now. The reason I don't think women and men should be playing together on the same field is because our physiology. Don't get me wrong. I've met women that are very strong. I was in the military. They're just as strong as a man. But that that's usually not the norm. The average woman has a certain makeup. So physically, when if I go out and I want to run 20 miles, I may be able to run quicker than a man. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that. But when I'm competing with men, they have larger muscle mass. They have larger hearts, lungs. The the physical advantages is not an equal playing field. And that, that leads me to, you know, um, the transgender um, movement where you have a transgender woman running with um, cisgender women. So that means that this transgender woman has a different physiological makeup. And, and since she's an athlete along with the other cisgender women, then I would have to think that she's stronger, you know, because of um, her, um, her internal XY chromosomal makeup. So it, it, it's two arguments. I mean, well, there's two questions here. Should women be allowed to play sports? Because traditionally we have a certain role and that role is I, I feel to a certain degree is it's forced on us from birth. I mean, not many of us come out walking with high heels. Okay? okay. So, I mean, these are the type of things I'm talking about. So what about our rights to play sports and, and experience different things athletically versus what about transgender women rights to compete as women? I mean, it's just a whole hodgepodge of everything. And I don't think we're going back to the forties where we were at home and that was where we worked at. Okay. 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 Well, I, I just wanted to bring that up because on my take of it, I have two sides of the spectrum. Should women play with the men? Uh, I'm, I'm, in, I'm torn between the two, actually, because I feel as though women should play with the men and maybe not all the positions, though. Like, you know, I don't feel as though they should do the running back 
basically they just need to stay out of the way type of positions because if they get hit, it's going to be different. But two, two, I'm, I'm only saying that because I'm thinking about how some men, when they get hit, you know, they never come back. You know what I'm saying? But on another aspect, I just feel as though the woman is too pretty to be getting bumps and bruises like that. I don't want her looking like that. I don't want her looking. I don't want to have a, a nasty split in her head or these big oh. patches on their body. I don't want that. I, that's that's not going to be my wife to be after getting beat up like that. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Can I hear that. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I mean, you know, I love me some Candace Parker. I love the way she looks, and I love that she could probably beat me in basketball. I'll, I'll take that all day, but I just can't take somebody being able to tackle me and, and lift more weights than I can lift, and actually getting hit like that, I don't find her that much attractive to me. Like, she's not going to be, like, that's going to be a whole portion of women that men, some men might not be attracted to, so I don't want to put them in a whole nother perspective, but that is my synopsis. Now, some, I'm not saying all, but majority of men wouldn't marry those type of women, you know, just majority. I'm not saying everybody, I'm not saying one or two, but I know it's not every, all these girls going to have uh, husbands, you know what I'm saying? It's not like the uh, women's league when, you know, when they had major league baseball and they went to war and the women stopped playing baseball for entertainment, that's totally different. You know what I'm saying? Taking over a guy sport into the woman's sport. That's totally different from a woman playing football, getting hit, and then having these bruises. And then next week, you know, she's supposed to go out there with her chin split open. I don't know if I could talk to her with one, less, one or two teeth, less teeth. You know what I'm saying? It's just like hockey. I just don't think women should play hockey. I don't want you to get hit with the puck. Your face be messed up for the rest of your life. I don't know how good that's going to look in my book. You know what I'm saying? You know, it just. I think, it, I think it's a huge risk, number one. You know, I agree with you. A man hit a woman tackling her on the field. He ain't going, oh, that's a woman. Let me tap her. You know, uh -huh. his mind is on football and his mind is on tackling that person. He ain't going to back off and just respect the fact that she's a woman when he on the field. Right. I think it's a huge risk. I think it's a, it's a, it's a risk that even if the woman took, I'm sure she realizes what she's getting herself into to the extent that that you could damage your body, your yourself for life. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, one wrong kid could take her out playing with me. And I, I just, I don't, I don't, I can't imagine it. Count me out. Put me on the chilling squad. <laughs> for real. So, <laughs> so everybody is, is in cahoots on, well, my son, you're a little bit split on, on, on the women's no, sports. We, we could play with, I think we should play, as a group because our physiological makeup. I know there's anomalies on either side, outliers on either side. That that's probably it's women out there that can 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 compete with guys, no problem. I've seen them. Um, but for the most part, I think because of how um what our makeup is, I, I think it's best to keep it separate. I do agree, I'm torn though, because I agree with Damali to that we should be able to present womanhood the way as authentically as possible and see it's kind of like what you say mr b is a little bit um sexist because what you're really saying is that you want us to appear in a stereotypical way that a woman in your mind should appear pretty prim not bruised up you know not strong you know but that's a part of being a woman too okay okay i mean I'm not saying I'm being sexist. I'm just being real with, I, I want them to be beautiful all day. I just want something. That You're being I, sexist. I'm it. saying I, I like to see something that's beautiful. I don't want to see her beat up. That's just all I'm saying. I can't see her beat up all day. Like the, the problems and pressure, pains and fears that I've been going through all my life. I don't want to, I want her nails to look good and not have dirt in her nails. I want her to be able to, you know, when she walked past me, I want to be able to give her a second look. I, I can't have a, I can't have somebody that once they pass me, that's the last time I plan on seeing them. I don't want that type of thought in my head. You know what I'm saying? Well, I, I mean, I will hope she cleans up. I will hope she has, the woman knows how to clean up. It don't matter. It doesn't matter. Even 
even if her her non her non cleansy things are some things I see in certain women, like 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 I said, her nails are a certain way. If they gray or something, that's a di- that's a some difficulty. You know what I'm saying? You know, it's just something I have in my in my mental state that I won't let things pass me. I don't let little small things pass me. Like there are little tiny things, like you know, I call natural some natural about them. I like natural women, so it's something about her that she's natural, like. You know, she ain't got to be full out natural, but I know it's something in, on her body part that totally makes me say she's a natural woman. Not, you know, she got to wear some makeup because she went to work. I get it. I get that. I get that. I get that part. But I'm just talking about somebody that's not willing to, when they go jogging, to put on a whole little entourage suit and everything, go jogging just to look cute. No, no, you, you're not jogging. You're just trying to look cute. You're not going to work out. you just trotting you're not even running you don't even break a sweat like just stop it just stop it.com stop it.com so i'm just trying to give you an understanding of how i my perception of <laughs> what i think women should look like that's all you know what's funny about that mr Big, my friend who plays football is actually also a model <laughs> she's very okay cute. okay so, but yeah just because a woman plays football doesn't mean she can't be a very feminine woman but it's still some things about her that would make me see that she might be able to might be playing football. Like, you know, like a little cut in her shoulder or something. It's just something I noticed. Like, it's just something I noticed. So I, I did want to move on to asking y'all golden questions on, we still on, how do you know that this man or this woman is violent? Since y'all was talking about it. How do you, what is a red flag at this point what's the red flag that you be like oh this person crazy this is just not the one for me what gives you the stop stop for for you and you know what i want i'm gonna go with i'm gonna go with marcella can can you give me an a uh, a difference on oh. what's your stop, stop what's your this this person totally crazy yeah because i'm gonna give you mine you, well, from you a violent know. standpoint we all been out and the ladies i'm sure you can attest some people may excuse it and call it being an alpha male very um masculine but I know I've been out with some guys where they have no control of their emotions. Like you're out, you're having a good time. Maybe somebody may be appreciating you a little too much or standing too close to you at the bar, or look, linger too long. Anything, anything in their mind, jealousy. That's a that's a red flag to me. The possession, the jealousy, and um, I would say the overaggression type of things where they may be out getting in the fights or being just very aggressive towards other people and the inability to control emotions. To me, that's a precursor to uh, me getting a beat down at some point, because if they out on the street beating other people or maybe they beat, beat their old girlfriend or wife, heck, some, some people who are aggressive towards their significant other or, or, or one night stand or somebody they've been dating for a long time, whatever the situation is, they may be beating on their own parents. So, you know, it's an indicator on how they treat other people. Just because you're with somebody and they're treating some other people like trash don't mean that that won't be turned on you. So for me, that that's a big indicator. How do you respect and treat other people? And is it with violence, disdainment, and um, and anger? Okay, okay. What, what about you, Miss D? Yeah, I would have to agree with that. Um, I think for me, it's conflict resolution. I I have to know how you react in high heat situations before I can even be seriously committed. Um, I can't put myself in a position not knowing that you're, how you're gonna fight? Are you gonna fight fair? You know, are you gonna <laughs> take time to even try to understand where I'm coming from? Or is it just always gonna be my way, I'm right, and I'm gonna fight to make sure you realize I'm right. Okay. Or, am I, or am I with somebody who's going to really seek to understand and to compromise and to move forward forward in harmony and agreement? That That's that's what I'm looking for. If okay. if, if I notice that you're a, a person who likes conflict, because mm-hmm. you can tell when people like to be uh, mm-hmm. contrarian, you know, they, they just don't agree with things. They always have something to say against whatever somebody is saying. Like, I, you know, okay. that's mm-hmm. traitorous, you know. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like people who get angry about the stupidest little things, you know, if you can get angry about that, okay, then that's really serious. How are you going to react to that? So just those small little things, like 
how you react to those high heat situations matters very much to me. Okay, what's a red flag to you, Miss Michelle? How can you tell whether this guy is going to do something crazy or you know what I mean? How have you turned people away red flag for stuff like that already? Before no, nah, I was stupid when I was young, but trust me, the next one that comes around, I'm gonna put every experience I had and be like, oh, that's a red flag. You know what? We can just stay friends. How you doing? <laughs> I agree. Everything that the Molly said. No, seriously. I I could definitely be transparent and say I went through 20 years of naiveness because I didn't have a father in my life to let me know being the oldest daughter of and the oldest child of the family who I really was. And I had to learn it the hard way. So yes, I was looking for love in all the wrong places. I saw the red flags, but because yeah, I was talking about men and many other women, because I didn't want to be alone, I dealt with. No more. Okay. Bottom okay. line. And so when you see red flags, I put it this way. If they can't love you for who you are, but if you have flaws, love those flaws out of you. And then like the things that you like also and willing to do the things that you like to do or go to the places that you like to go because you have to do the same thing with them. As long as they meet you the same way you got to meet them, then that's a good flag. But like the Molly said, they showing red flags where they get angry in the, in the back or you make more money and they uh, give us snide little remarks about, you know, you making more money and all that stuff. It's time to walk away. I, mm -hmm. A man told me when he was teaching us single women, he said, test the man out. Piss him off on purpose. See how he reacts. I was like, oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, tap a, tap a button that you should be tapping? No, okay. No. No, have, you no. have you tried that before? No, he, no, seriously. He said, see if you can uh, see how he reacts by making him mad to see how he reacts. Have you tried you. that? Have you no, tried? I have not yet. But my thing is just me alone. I'm aggressive. <laughs> I'm stubborn. So just me alone can test his, to, um, hit his buttons. And if he can handle me, he can handle anything. Okay, okay. See, I never, I, I never tested. Go ahead. No, 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 go ahead. I never tested no. my husband, but I sure did ask the universe to reveal it to me before we got. And I mean, I married my husband within six months of, of meeting him, and I actually oh, wow. did, and I was able to see him in conflict. So, and I asked to see him in conflict, and I saw him in conflict. So, well, if, yeah. if you don't, if uh, I believe this, instead of me testing. I, I had to learn for me. I just had to open my mouth and ask the question. Okay. How, how are you? Are you are you are you a ticking time bomb? Do you like to hit women? I mean, time will Who's tell. Gonna Who's gonna be honest? Who's gonna be you honest about that? Yeah, I hit I hit a couple bitches. Yeah, yeah. Well, Is you know, you got you got some. <laughs> no, wait a minute. You got you got some that will be honest and don't have a shame. Cause then they're gonna say, "Yeah, I hit a couple of women, but they asked for it because they did this and did that." You got some that will be. I'm just gonna open my mouth and just ask some uncomfortable questions so I can know what I'm dealing with and how I want to move forward. Whether it's a friendship or moving into a relationship. Ask the questions, whether they lie or not. Time will tell, like Damali said. She asked the universe. I'm gonna say, God, I'm I'm be like, God, reveal to me real quick because I ain't trying to go no further than two, three weeks and get my heart all caught up and stuff. Reveal it now so I can move on. Okay, what well, Miss Miss Felicia, what about you? What about you in, in this conflict on this one? I can appreciate your question when you asked about the red flags and what, you know, how do you identify them? I think the biggest thing for all of us, well, let me just speak for me. As a woman, in my younger years, I overlooked the red flags. Like, I, they would stare me in the face. They, they spelt danger, danger, danger. And I ignored that, right? And as I got older, I saw a red flag a mile away. And I'm a, I, I guess, you know, the difference today is I'm not naive when it comes to red flags. I, I know them today. I recognize them. I can, again, I can smell them a mile away. And so that probably was my determining factor in a whole, in, in a few relationships that I was in that didn't even manifest because 
those red flags was there, I saw them and I wasn't going to ignore them this time. When I was back in my twenties and I saw those red flags and I ignored them, it almost took my life. I almost lost my life behind it, right? So it's just things that you go through in life that mature you and develop you and show you that you don't ever have to go back down that road again. And honestly speaking, you won't. Like it's just some red flags that I know for me, I'll never allow a man to put his hands on me. It's just, just some things that I'm not going to allow. I'm not going to ever allow a man to cheat on me. So those red flags that I saw back then, I dare not overlook them today. I, I dare not. Like you, you get one time to show me that you're violent. You get one time to show me that you don't know how to genuinely love a woman. You know, your only outlet is to put your hands on her. That's not who I, I, I mean, that's not who I choose to be with. So I don't ignore those signs today. See, I, I suddenly want to bring up my life into these conversations because you know, they kind of like a, a own unknown fact that I have been dealing with baby mama drama since my child has been born. So I have been fighting, fighting, fighting just to even spend time with the child at this point because seven I seven years, seven years of bitter woman you know, family drama for no reason. And all I'm trying to do is make my child the same child that mm -hmm. I give all of these talents to all these other kids. I want to do the same thing with my child. So it kind of, that's the hurtful part of my pain. My everyday pain is when I don't able to intertwine with my child or if I buy her some gift and she never sees it, but I'm, I bought it like, Oh, what's going on? You know, or, or when I get my, you know, when my parents tell, call me screaming at me that something got returned, it's like, oh my God, I got to deal with this type of drama. When technically, you know, my mentality of a strong person is basically to be there no matter what, you know, I don't want to be with you, but I want to definitely be with my child. You know what I mean? Cause I just don't do a lot of drama. Like I could smell it a mile away. I just never thought it would happen to me at my age. It's like, oh my God, it happened to me. Like, how could this actually happen to me? Like, I never thought I would be the statistical male that goes through the same drama everybody else has. Like, I can't, I can't believe I put myself through it. Like, I ask myself every day, why? How could it happen? How could I fix the situation? Like, even my 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 frat brother, he marries the sister, so it's like we all like intertwine. They they like now now we have kids that are together so it's like oh my god this is like a total wish wash for me so my mentality on how being broken uh, i've been broken i've been broken like as as a as a human being i've been probably more attacked mentally by myself and broken than anything like how can i fix these issues that i'm having at this point whether i can reel this back in and try to make it work like you can't understand how many different ways i've tried to rectify my situation and it just doesn't do anything but get worse and worse and worse and worse so at this point in time it's like no matter how good of a man i want to be and how good i feel i want to be i really want to like break into and break out of that cycle so that's why, you know, some of these little talks that we do have, maybe some instance of trying to fix in some of the means in my relationships that I can mend these gaps that I have the gap about, you know what I mean? So sometimes when I ask you these certain questions, it's to get that one answer that I need, that I need to hear. You might not know I'm asking for it, but it is in these conversations that we're having that's going to make me stronger as of trying to be able to communicate. Because communication is hard to communicate when somebody that's pretty much really, we really not there. It's like, oh, yeah. kind of like, so as you answer the phone, you know, you're going to hear some nastiness. It's just not going to be a good conversation. You're like, oh, God, it's going to be like this forever. Like, it's just kind of like. Is, 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 is that the equivalent to our physical abuse? Like what you're describing is, you know, uh, Ba a, a situation with your baby mom, but we we were describing physical. Is is right, that what we, but we, we mine is more. Abusive. It's more abusive of a mental breakdown because it's like if okay. if I was confronted, 
it, my reaction is what they would be thinking how I would react. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm much older now where I, I would think first, but my reaction it would, would want to be totally different of how I want to react off of the situation. My reaction is like, oh my God. But they already know me. They know I'm like hot-headed. Uh, I've gotten to, when I went to college, I got into 25 fights when I went to college. So Wait, that's a, that's, a, that's a warning sign right there. We just talk about that warning sign. I didn't hit no women. I, I beat up a lot of guys. Ooh, like, be you a red flag, man. No, no, no. no, no. I, have a question, I only beat these guys up because I had no money. You, you, you can't take people's money and, and they crying over there. No, I'm not going to let you take his money. I'm kidding, Mr. B. I'm kidding. I'm serious. That's the type of person I was. I, oh, I, we were playing with him. That was I, funny. No, I hate to hear. I hate to hear. I hate to hear. Swear, but I do have a question, Mister B. So, you asked the question about the red flags. Uh huh. Let's fast forward, and better yet, let's take your daughter out of the equation. You okay. didn't see those red flags with her prior to. No, because I know pregnancy? her. I knew her in college. I don't Ooh, care. I don't bad. care. You didn't, did you not see those red flags? Honestly. Uh, I did a little bit, but I was that. Come on, man. But we were friends, though, so I didn't think I would be a part of. Listen, no, gym. no woman's gonna change just because you're friends. She I'm is not trying to change she, nobody. We was um, friends. That's not what she said. It is. It is safe. I said no woman is gonna change. That is just who they are, regardless of you they friend or not. Not saying you was trying to change her, but whatever you see in that person, unless they willing to change, exactly, they're gonna show it to you and everybody else. So you, mm. I and, mean, that, and that's why I asked because we that's, played that's, video games together. We were friends. We were really but, chill. But, but but you're you're evading the question. I guess my thing is you asked us the question, and we were honest with you about our red flags. Like we all can recognize them. So we're trying to help you. You're you're developing. You're maturing. You finally you're opening up. And you're sharing. You're sharing with us, like your past, your situation. But did you not notice the the, the controlling factors in your heart? Did you not notice that she could be probably borderline bipolar? It's a pretty. Like, it's a pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I I didn't. I didn't think I was going to be a part of that. No, know? no, that's oh. not what we're asking. So you no, saw no. it, you just didn't. So, okay, I so saw what you it, said? but I didn't you see, saw it, you just I didn't, didn't see that I was going to get, get put to a situation where it was like uh, she would she would say one thing and do another. Like how my my like my mother got involved, it was bad. Like she would say that we was getting married, but I never even had no discussions like that. It was, it was bad. It was to the point mm -hmm. where I just didn't believe that lies were being made in order for them for her to look good in order to tear down my life and my relationship with my child so it was kind of it's kind of you know i really don't want to you know go in too deep too mm -hmm. far on it yeah but the sure. simple fact that that the pain was yeah. kind of being like the same simple fact of somebody punching me in my face all yeah. the time yeah. and it's like the button that I that people like to pick. The reason why I said I got in so many fights when I was in college because my frat brother, he's like the biggest guy. So instead of trying to fight him, they choose to fight the other guy. You know, the light skinned guy with the eyes and the dreads and everything. <laughs> so it was more of a let me instead of picking on him, let me pick on him. And I'm a, and I'm more of a hot headed person. Like I I was hot headed in college. I just instead of. Uh, Instead of thinking about it, I just react no no matter what. So if you, you're taking somebody's money, they would legitimately come to me and be like, he took my money. And I would definitely go beat him up, take take the money back and make myself <laughs> some money in the, in the process. It kind of happened like that a lot when I was in school. So I was just, you know, the nice guy that always made sure that, you know, people was protected. Like I was the, the bouncers at the school, like. I was the actual person that would take the tickets for you to get inside the school parties. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I would usually be the one to walk the models out on the stage and all that. So the guys couldn't get to them. So they would usually choose me as that person to do things. So that's why I just wanted to come to you guys to talk to you a little bit about, you know, a little bit my, my situation and how this actually intertwines and acts with 
what's going on in the way of the world or how men are going through these type of things. The diameter is kind of like smacking me in the face on how my world is actually coming into full circle and seeing what the women can actually give me some some conclusions on how to fix these processes. Because this process is not a one step process. It's an ongoing process that I play in my life that I'm bringing forth to you guys on how yeah. men deal yeah. with certain women that they shouldn't be dealing with. Like, you know, how we interact with women, how we talk to women. Like, do we just choose this woman just because of who she is, what she looks like? That played a big role on how Michelle definitely came and talked about about that because that plays a, a important role. You know, most men want this so-called trophy trophy, but you can't really get a trophy like that unless you really know the person. Your trophy is actually the ones that you can really meet and actually know that person. So building off of stability and understanding the process of how everything goes, you have to really understand what a relationship really is and how you can actually build and make a relationship. So you, I have one person over here that had, it only took them six months, six months. So it took them six months to start and get married. Then we have, Miss Felicia, how long did it take you to get married? Uh, you talking about my first marriage or my second? <laughs> so you, okay, okay, okay. That plays, that plays a role too because- Okay, I mean, first time and yeah. second time. How long? Yeah. What's the yeah. But so my husband and I, we, shoot, we dated five months, five, and we Ooh. were married. And, and we've been so married now almost the, seven years. The months. first one or this, or this one now? My husband now, my husband now. Okay. But can I say something real quickly? Because I, I I have to get this off my chest. Go ahead. As as your aunties and your sisters on this show, I salute you. Right. I, I do. Right. Because right. You right. you've been you've been hinting and alluding since day one that you've had some things that you're dealing with, right? And we mm -hmm. all we 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 all knew it was relationship wise, right? Mm -hmm. We're women. We know. We know what that looks like, seems like, smells like, all of that. So, but for you to finally open up, <laughs> <laughs> come on, healing is getting ready to take place for you. And I think that's a right. good thing, right? You have to start somewhere. Uh -huh. and, and and God only knows bringing us together out of nowhere for this, this to be an unpopular opinion for us to be able to help you move forward in life because... Stradivari, you can be stuck. Sometimes we can get stuck in situations that, like you said, you wake up and you're you're like, how the heck did I get here? Uh -huh. I don't deserve this. Why me? The pity. All of that sometimes can overtake us. But I, again, as your aunties, your sisters, we commend you because this is where you can now take your part, your progression and move forward. I get it. We all get it. Like we know <laughs> she was crazy from the worst they go. You ain't gotta tell us. We know. <laughs> well, can, can I piggyback off of Felicia? Uh, she actually took the words out of my mouth. I was gonna say thank you for being transparent because yes. even though I was transparent to say how stupid I was for the 25 years in my life, and I still just search love for all the wrong reasons and then all in the wrong places. I appreciate you for being open, but I will say this, you, like Felicia said, you got your aunties and your little sister. I'm your little, little sister. I'm just going to get on your nerves and tell you like it is. So after after we finish this, then you can really come and let us give you pointers on what you should do because, you, man, you're going to be healed and you're going to be happy. So after yeah. this, you know, because we don't want to put everything out there. But yeah, after <laughs> this, you know, your little sister got a whole lot to tell you, you right now. Yes, sir. Yeah. We got some. I got some plans, got plans for you, bro. Yes, right. That's right. We got you. We got you, brother. We got yeah. you. Okay. I'm alive you. I'm alive with us. You safe with That's us. That's right. Definitely man. safe with us. That's yeah. right. I agree with you. Thank you for standing up. You don't deserve you. that. No, and, and, and it's no so different than a woman. No, a man. You don't deserve that. Like you. I'm not saying that you're faultless, and I'm not saying that you're perfect because we all know that you're not but you don't appear to, to deserve any of that. And so that, that, and maybe that's another conversation that we can have at another time, but that right there irks the heck out of me. When you oh, yeah, find it's pissing me, me off. It's pissing me off right now. 
really have a love for their children and they mm -hmm. want to be involved in their children's lives, exactly. how dare you strip him of that? How dare That's you right. take him away from that? I, you, Michelle said it. I said, I grew up not knowing my daddy. My, I met my daddy when I was in the 11th grade and he died when I was in the 12th. Wow. So, how dare you, how dare she deprive whoever the anybody deprive a man from being there for his children when mm -hmm. he wants to be there mm -hmm. yet you got all these other people that are begging their men their fathers to be in their kids lives and they could care less so yeah. that, that that imbalance there that's a whole other problem that we have in our community of, of African American people that we just have to be real with ourselves and, and realize that we have to fix that. As women, we need to mature. We need to grow up. We need to realize that we're making it hard on the brother when it shouldn't be hard on him at all. Not if you're trying to spend time with your daughter, not if you are buying her gifts and buying her presents and wanting to be in her life, that shouldn't be hard on you at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Give her my number. Yeah, you can. You, no, I like to no, say no. that um, you're not an ATM. I mean, I will say that our relationships and our community, um, it is a situation, but you're not an ATM. You got feelings. And that's why I had asked you earlier, you know, like the level of abuse we were mentioning was physical, but you were mentioning a totally different type of abuse. And a lot of men are silent mm -hmm. about it. It doesn't mm -hmm. help our communities. You know, it, it, it takes it takes two. It takes two to make the baby it, ta it takes two so yeah they right you know thank you for for being vulnerable in this moment and expressing it i appreciate that appreciate that all i'm gonna say is i'm pissing i don't even know you that well you and, and we just now meet we got I'm you baby pissed. i'm pissed for you so yeah I mean, don't give her my number. I'm just gonna tell you some things to do to her. That's gonna. Yeah, that's gonna have to, yeah. I'm gonna I mean, it's, just, it's just a simple fact, you know, and just making it easier on just how this is going for me at this point in time. You know, all the lawyer fees and all the different. You know, we mm -hmm. all I gotta do is just pick her up. Like all of this is unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I just don't like to, you know, really go into how the story went. We'll definitely. Yeah. Um, take a little time off so you know yeah. I can definitely give yeah. y'all a little bit of rundown on it. But me being at this particular spot back in DC, you know, I had a lot of mental woes when I was in Tennessee. So I thought mm -hmm. I was just going to go to Tennessee, jump around, get married, and and be happy and bliss. But you know, leaving my child in Maryland and dealing with that situation, I just didn't want to you know, start something new and basically leave what what once wasn't fixed or right. even touched right. to let that go. Like, you know, yeah. I just can't leave the child by herself or even if even if she got a chance, at least I'm gonna just be right there to just walk, you know, she could just come, you know, never know. Yeah. So yeah. I just, you know, had that mentality of, you know, gotta stay, gotta, you know, break this relationship off. It's just not gonna work. You know, that's my whole mentality was kind of broken on that. So that's the reason, real reason why I'm at, back in the D.C. area, you know, doing the music thing and doing my thing of teaching, teaching kids. Because right now at this point, have if y'all know, I've been to different states teaching so I can teach any child at this point. But the main child that I want to teach is my is own. Is your own. Correct. 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 Exactly. Correct. Well, so we're that, gonna we're going to help you. Um, move forward <laughs> all right I definitely, I, I definitely appreciate this unpopular opinion because technically you know it's not about just having a talk about the unpopular opinion but these are our opinions mm -hmm. exactly. and these are you know we i am human at this point right, in time. right. we right. are all you know we all go through our trials and tribulations and reason why we talk about these people's opinion and us giving our opinion is because something wasn't fixed that we have to talk about in their transgressions in their lives. So that's yeah. why I brought this up today. Yeah. It's not about, you know, Mr. B is, you know, giving a sob story, but I'm giving you no. a life story of me exactly. and what's happening in, in my everyday affairs. So, yeah. so, you know, I do work hard, but you know, sometimes I just need to take a stop to let you guys know that, Hey, I do have a heart and I'm not this, you know, big mm -hmm. macho man. Yeah, this macho man. I, I take these little long mile walks 
and I lost weight for a purpose. You know, my purpose is to really get my mental together so I can fix these uh, things that I've really made scars on myself. So, and I'm willing to try to heal it no matter if it takes yeah. alcohol to just throw it right on the wound is what I'm saying. So I don't well, mind taking we, these things. <laughs> well, now we know the reason why you don't sleep at night. I don't well, sleep at well, night. And that's well, one of the well, main like I have a whole album that I wrote just because of that, you know, it's just a whole, mm. a whole mentality of how I'm thinking at this point. So yes, that is my sleeping problem. It's hard to sleep when you are always trying to fix something. So that's why. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, what I was, no, what I was just going to say is now we know why you don't, you don't whoop her. Remember yesterday? Yeah. Was like, I, don't don't time for that. I can't put that in <laughs> now, there. Now I can see why. Now mm. I can see why. But I, mm -hmm. but I think also Stradivari, and it's just a reality to this. It's time to heal. Yeah. It's time for you to heal. It's time for you to move forward. You know, um, we get it. We know why you're doing what you're doing. I mean, as a man, you're doing it for your child, but your life matters too. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't know how we got on this subject tonight, but okay. So let's just. Yeah. Let's just you know, so we'll, we'll real with it, but that, that's it's a reality that you know you're human, like you said, and you have feelings. And we as women, I said this to y'all when we kicked when we started off. We don't <clears throat> we oftentimes don't we don't listen to hear, we listen to speak. And tonight mm -hmm. we hear you. Like we all seriously hear you and what you're saying because as much as we've harped on the man and he better not and he bet whatever at the end of the day it, michelle said it women sometimes can overstep their boundaries our mouths oh, get us in trouble we can we can take it way too far and we have to mature as well we have to come to those places in our lives as well that we step back and say hey i want to be better i don't want to be i don't want to be the woman i was five years ago I want to be the woman I was yesterday, better yet. But but we have to desire to change and to improve <clears throat> in order to demolish community, in order to heal our community. That's all yeah. we've been talking about this whole entire really mm -hmm. time when you think about it. How do we heal our community? How do mm -hmm. we as a black people heal? And that situation right there, it has to start with you, but it also has to start with her. And the way it starts with her is you got to heal. Once you heal, then she's gonna she gonna check herself and realize, oh crap, I messed up, and that very well could be too late. Mm -hmm. When she realized that she can she don't have no more control over you. Mm -hmm. Bottom line. Mm -hmm. I will. We definitely gonna have to end this. So why don't we do that? <laughs> hands and let's pray. We will. We will. <laughs> We will revisit this situation again. I won't let y'all down on giving y'all the info on, on the outtakes mm -hmm. of this. So we will definitely discuss this a little bit more after the show. Um, right now, at this point in time, <laughs> let's go ahead and and what type of businesses are you ladies definitely into and doing at this point in time? Uh, let's start with Miss D on this one. Ms. D. <laughs> Hey y'all, I'm Damali, and uh, you can find me on the internets at Journey with Damali on Facebook and uh, Instagram and TikTok. And then um, I'm also a part of Our African Family. It's a nonprofit organization in Houston, Texas, operating in the Fifth Ward community, which is a very underserved community, supporting the needs of the the, the children and elders in the community. So, if you're interested, come and check us out. Um, Our African Family with the K dot org. Um, we always post everything we do there so you can see pictures and everything that's going on. So, Miss Felicia? Hey guys, I'm Felicia Jones and I realized last night I've been ranting and raving for the whole time we've been on here letting you guys know who I am and what I do, but I'm not giving any contact information. But I am Felicia Jones and I am the owner and founder of Smart Scholars Academy and Smart Scholars Foundation. We are a licensed child care center here in Rocheron, Texas, and then um, we also, I'm the founder of a nonprofit organization, Smart Scholars Foundation, whereas we promote and support the betterment of our children and youth in the sunny side, low income areas. You can find us. We just revamped our website at www.smartscholarsacademy.com. Um, there you'll find all the information about us as well as our nonprofit as well. Miss Michelle. 
Hey everyone, Michelle Black here with the Kingdoms Group, where we are your one-stop business concierge company, where we provide all our customers, businesses, corporations, whatever you do or whatever whoever you are, your, we provide you your administrative service needs and your travel service needs. So feel free to contact us at 346-917-0048, extension 1. And you can email us at info at kas-llc.com or visit us at the kingdoms with the S group.com. Thank you. Ms. Marcella. Hey, I'm Marcella, owner of Rubik LLC. We help our client, well, we help our clients develop winning strategies for success. Um, this enables them to increase their impact and also the bottom line. If you're interested in our services, please do reach out at info at erubric.com. Info at E-R-U-B-R-I-C-K.com. You can find us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and a host of other social media platforms under Erubic LLC. Thank you. All right, and I am Mr. Stradivari Ramon Baynard. And as I am your music teacher, artist, and musician, I have a business, Mr. B's Music and Arts. I teach kids from all ages, from the ages of four all the way to 21 and over. Um, I teach every instrument, which is in voice, piano, and all of the trumpets, brass instruments, and woodwinds. Uh, at this point in time, you can come and find me on Artista Stradivari on Facebook or Scream Art Strad on Instagram. But at this point in time, I would like to say this is our unpopular opinion. And our opinions at this point really matter. It really matters. It really matters coming from the the whole group as a whole coming together as a team to, you know, give our statements on our opinions on what we think about today. And today was a very, you know, touchy moment and touchy subjects. But we also had a lot of good times where we talked about our laughter with our great comedians, and we also touched a little bit about the men, men, and, men and women in this world on being able to touch the hands of sports on whether women should play the man's sport or not. So we definitely had some unpopular opinions, but today was definitely popular opinions. We you know, got a little bit inside of Mr. B and seen where Mr. B head was at, and just to know and get a little bit of heartfelt remarks about what's going on in my, in my heyday, in my life. So as I say, good night to you and good night to me. For everybody, good night for our unpopular opinion. Bye.